Hello and welcome to Gebit Media. Uh, hopefully this is all working. Let me know whether you can see me. I'm just sort of playing with my camera a little bit and checking that I've got everything in the right position. Actually, I want to look that way a bit. There we go. Can you hear me and is my sound okay? Nothing's coming through on the stream at the moment. There is quite a lag really. It's about sort of 10 seconds or so, which is if I'm responding to people's uh, thoughts and things, uh, 10 seconds is quite a, de a a delay. Uh, so hopefully I'm not too tired. I'm feeling a little bit tired, just a bit worn out. I don't know why that is, but hopefully I'll perk up any second. Uh, hello, hello, uh, Luna Lotus, Nate, uh, Wojek Dabrowski. <laughs> uh, that's good to hear that it's sounding good. Mustafa Ali, thank you. Uh, lovely. It's, it, it's always really exciting. Uh, I love doing this. It's great fun. Uh, thanks for all your confirmations that it's working. Uh, so we've got uh, a few people joining us. I suppose I'll take a few seconds uh, before starting so it gives people a chance to uh, do their thing and join in. It's like waiting for students to arrive for a lesson, sort of stand there just waiting, saying, we'll get started in a minute. I usually have a starter on the board, that's what I usually do. So uh, <laughs> doing their little activity, um, which is usually... Uh, I like the, the, the tiny exercises that I've been putting online. I usually put one of those on the board and say, try and make this. So they all come in and do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you read it quite nicely. Oh, is that right? Uh, thank you. Uh, I won't try and say it again because I'll say it differently this time. Daffa <laughs> uh, Hicks. I do, can't say that. <laughs> What's up? Going well, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's nice to see you all. So um, the plan is uh, we are going to be making or painting uh, this, uh, which I, I think will be a leather backpack. That's a point. I was going to bring in uh, the image. So let's bring that in now. I'll bring it into the bottom here. Is that the best way? Yeah, I'll do it with the UV image editor, which we're in anyway. So let's open up the backpack, the inventory icon. There it is. So we've got a rough idea of what we're aiming for. I've got some reference images as well. Uh, maybe give an extra message on Discord to say you are live now. Some people might not know yet. And Okay, I'll quickly do that. Good idea. And the time zones. Yeah, the time zones is tricky, isn't it? So I'll just quickly go on there and let everybody know. Um, should I do at everybody? Some people get annoyed about at everybody. <laughs> at everyone, I should say. Uh, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm doing it. I'm doing it anyway. Uh, live now. Um, come and join me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, smiley face. I always have a smiley face. That's important. Okay, uh, yeah. And then it always gives me this warning. It's going to go to 800 plus people. I think there's 5,000 people now on the Discord server, so it's quite something really. Uh, in fact, I'll show you. Let me see. Can you see? Um, so Discord, how do I get there again? Here's how many we got. No, it's not even working. Oh, I am in there already. I always forget where things are in Discord. Um, server settings, it must be. Server settings. It should say it somewhere in here. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? No one's... Oh, there we go. Members. Members. 6,000. So we've beaten 6,000 now. Hey, how about that? Who'd have thought? I won't close it down, actually. I'll, I'll minimise it so it's in the background. In case anybody... Um, I don't know. In case of emergency. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Uh, hello to everybody. Um, uh, Amir Karim, you say it first, but I don't think you are. I think there's quite a few before you, actually. <laughs> uh, so I've given an extra message on Discord. Uh, USA, uh, Hugh the Dev. Uh, my face was on the left yesterday. I'm putting it over there because, over there, um, <laughs> uh, because um, I might use this area here. So I'm putting it up here, so uh, we probably won't use the outliner, so I thought I'd put it in the way there. In fact, I'll bring this down just slightly. Let me see what's going on to about there. There we go. Um, because I might use this area for the shader editor, because I like to have that going when I'm in texture paint mode. Oh, do you know, I've set this all up in UV editing space, haven't I? So it's all going to change when I go to texture paint. Oh, look at what a plonker. <laughs> so I'll take a few seconds doing that and pulling these around. Right, where are we? In there so about there about here and pull this down uh, now this is something the first lesson for the day for beginners this is a nightmare uh, so when your cursor changes like that and goes to the little crosshairs and you pull a little screen down 
Uh, you'd be surprised how many people do that and think, hang on, oh, how do I get rid of that? Well, right click in the middle and join areas. But you can only join an area that's the same size as the other one. <laughs> it's a bit of a trick, bit of a mathematics uh, nightmare, uh, to be honest. Anyway, let's bring the, um, the bag back in. There we go, the concept art. We got our uh, scrolls up in the corner there. They might need a bit of editing, actually. And yeah, I might... I might end up baking them, but we'll see. We'll see on that one. Uh, so, uh, good day to everybody. I'm going to give it a few moments. Uh, I mean, we've got up to 90 already, actually. Just a few moments before starting, uh, just to make sure uh, we've got everybody who's going to arrive, as it were. Uh, thank you, AM, for my saying my tutorials are awesome. Hello, Vista. Uh, Crazy Kid 636 what's up? <laughs> but Bluetooth, hello again. Uh, it's nice to see people back on here. So Big Tricky, for example. Well, hello, hello. <laughs> uh, Creeping Talon again. Hello. Uh, Tom Kayak. Uh, yes, there is a Discord channel. Uh, it's uh, The links are always in the description. So I, th I think um, I've got quite a few links in the description. So I think they may be at the bottom, but I might have decided to put them to the top because I mentioned them. There's, so I've got a Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, so I will post when there's going to be a live stream on there. But there's also the Discord server where um, it's an easy place to chat to me and show me your work if you're uh, wanting to do that. Uh, so just at Grant and um, I'll head right in there and say hello. Germany, tiny dreams, fishbone. These scrolls look familiar. They do indeed. <laughs> uh, uh, so is it uh, Diana Kawai? Is that, um, am I pronouncing that right? Because um, I, I, I felt like I was getting it wrong last time. Uh, lower my can camera's exposure it's this camera is about 15 maybe 20 no it can't be quite 20 about 15 years old so it's it's pretty bad unfortunately to be fair it's a good thing because uh then my face looks less wrinkly that's what i'm going for uh that's what they it's a subtle trick <laughs> that they use in photography no they don't uh but it does make me look less wrinkly which is um definitely a good thing uh, as long as you can see my hands moving, because occasionally I do this and do things like that, which can be reasonably helpful or not. Uh, thank you, Film Academy. Uh, hello, Soul Skinner. Uh, Tigran Safarian. Uh, uh, why don't they use the concept art as the icon? Seems nice to me. Yeah, the, the, the artist is really cool, actually. Um, Chris Handlauser, who does all this stuff. He's done some exceptional stuff. I don't know whether he's done the icon, actually. Um, it's a good question. I'm not sure who did the icon or not. He might be redoing. Am I right? Is he redoing the icon? He might be, because I think he asked me to do some art for it. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, your tutorials have been super helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, what are your thoughts on playing video games in moderation? <laughs> Creeping down. I think playing video games is great fun. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm looking forward to, um, is it, am I right in saying there's going to be the new sort of, um, Skyrim? Uh, I keep sort of seeing adverts and thinking, well, is that the new Skyrim or is that just a, a DLC or, but I, I love playing that and I hope it sort of moves forward, but I don't really have a lot of time. So, um, I take away, um, yeah, uh, I have to be a bit careful. Um, it's getting sucked in. You do get sucked in. That's the problem, especially RPGs, which I absolutely love. You can't play those for five minutes, can you? You really get sucked into them. But having said that, I do watch a fair bit of TV. Uh, TV's not as addictive, I don't find. It's just nice to just uh, flop in front of the TV, so I often do that. Uh, instructors are supposed to have wrinkles. Uh, yes, but I'm pretending to be a pretty instructor in some way. <laughs> uh, why does it look dim? Does it look dim? Uh, what's looking dim? That's interesting. Uh, does it... Uh, I mean, why colours are not crisp like in the reference image? Not sure. Not sure what you mean there. Uh, that is uh, Kemal uh, Akagoz. <laughs> Any other sort of issues? Um, uh, let me know. Uh, it's just the DLC, is it? Uh, uh, TES Online, not Skyrim. Oh, I see. Is it? Oh, shame. Uh, hello, Sculptus and Imperial Games. Cool name. Uh, Poiji, <laughs> the moose bean. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, can you make a series of this, but for high quality games? Yes. Yeah, um, I'm planning on doing, um, so I've done the uh, Spartan Warrior. I've done a sort of um, dinosaur model as well. That's in a playlist. That's for 2.8. So it's got a similar sort of baking textures and all that sort of thing in terms of normal maps. So I will do sort of um, high um, high end games, I suppose high quality games. Not necessarily high quality, but you mean in terms of the graphics. Um, yes, I will do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, let's begin. So, oh, chair just twanged. Okay, so um, if we're all ready to go. Uh, right, so what I've got to do, uh, so I'm in the texture paint tab up here. And um, uh, so I always have it with three tabs. So I brought out a new window uh, because I like to change this to the shader editor up here. Oh, that's weird, is it? My brain must be going because I always thought it's this animation over here, isn't it? Shader editor. There we go. Uh, press N to get rid of that side panel there, and we need to create a new texture. So at the moment, obviously, what I've got selected is this strap here. Yes, so that's my active object. I've got actually a few things selected, but the active object is the strap. I know that because it's turned purple. That means it hasn't got a material on it. Um, excuse me, hasn't got a texture on it. So if I go over to the side here, let's just see that you can see that. That's all good. Um, then I, it's saying no texture. So that's often a problem that beginners come up against. So let's just zoom in here and you'll see what happens when I press the little plus sign. Bidding, base color. I'm going to make this 1024 by 1024. It's quite, uh, there's quite a big map that is to be fair. So unless it's a really huge object, you shouldn't really need to go much beyond that. Uh, like people are saying, high end games. I mean, sometimes you want to uh, draw double the resolution of what it will end up being. So you draw with more detail and then squish it down. Uh, but again, this is just for the icon, so it won't actually be going. Uh, they were actually using 512 by 512 maps for a whole set of objects. Um, and then I think they're going to squish them all onto a 2K, one 2K map, which will just reference all these uh, different um, textures. Hopefully, I'm making sense here. Uh, so, um, so one th what I'm saying is 1024 by 1024, that's absolutely fine. Now, I think the straps, did I make them a different object last time? I can't really remember. If I go to the UV image editor, if I go into edit mode, actually. Oh, I thought I was there. Let's go to view. What did I just do there? Am I being a bit crazy? Okay, so I'm in the image editor. It's changed in 2.8. There's an image editor now and a UV image editor. So it's a bit weird if I select all now. So yeah, so the straps and the buckles are all on one map and the backpack is on a different map. And obviously the scrolls are going to be on their separate map as well. And usually I would put them all onto the same map. And with the case of the scrolls, I would have to bake them from here onto a new map. But in this case, I'm just going to leave them as three separate. Hopefully that's okay and people are happy with that. Just quickly check the stream in case someone's saying I'm doing something stupid. <laughs> it's always handy to know. Uh, I look like Michael Rosen. Is that Rosen? Rosen? Uh, not really sure who that is. Uh, I, I'm quite ignorant when it comes to the names of people. It's uh, It might be perhaps my dyslexia. I don't know. It's maybe that I just don't take an interest enough. <laughs> Probably the more that. Um, anyway, uh, Jazz. Hey, Grant. Just wanted to ask how you um, how do you make sure that models are proportionate to each other when making multiple assets and how problematic is resizing hand-painted models? It's, it's quite a good question. And you know, I, I've been a bit slack with this whole project. Um, I've generally gone by sort of um, one sort of grid unit. Hopefully you can see that on the screen, yeah. So one grid unit and done models in there. But I think I've changed the, the size every now and again. Uh, they don't seem too concerned, I think, because it's quite easy to change those things and make it into a prefab in Unity. So I don't think it's too much issue for them. I hope it hasn't been. Uh, and I haven't been annoying them with different sizes and things. Um, yeah, so um, I don't think it's too problematic. Resizing, uh, so if you look at the environment that I built, uh, those are quite big models, but it doesn't seem to make that much difference because they'll be in the distance. So you just gotta think what it's gonna be like on screen and how much detail you need to put into the hand painted. That's more important in terms of how close it is to the camera and how close it could be. Um, and that's more important than how it is in Blender. It, this is, again, from my understanding anyway. Uh, the color in Blender looks more crisp than in reference image. So really don't know what that person was inquiring. <laughs> uh, will you ever do another low poly human? Yes, I, I wanna do a proper low poly person. I haven't really done uh, any good ones though. 
uh, dinos, my son loves dinos, Marcus, good. Uh, then you'll have to make him a dinosaur on Blender following the tutorial. Uh, uh, Soul Skinner says, I don't think I have dyslexia, but I often remember users' names uh, visually. Uh, yeah, uh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, so I, I, I'm okay with faces, but names uh, just sort of go out of my head quite quickly. Quite difficult being a teacher when you don't remember names. Um, what's the difference between clear and applying scales? Once I accidentally pressed two buttons and it changes the object scale to one. So control A, you can set the scale to one. I'm not sh quite sure of your question. Sorry about that. Um, no, oh, thank you. Your, your low poly humans are great. Thank you very much. Uh, Diana, De Diana, <laughs> keep thinking, how is that name pronounced? You'll have to let me know. Anyway, uh, moving on then. So we want to see some painting. So um, I've added that texture. Have I added, added that texture? That's weird. I'm sure I said add texture, didn't I? Maybe I didn't. Okay, so press the plus icon, base color, and I'll, I'll give it a name. So this is uh, strap and buckles and 1024 by 1024. That's fine. Get, um, I, I always suggest giving it the rough uh, texture that it's going to be. So somewhere in the browns is good. Uh, that would be fine. Uh, it doesn't need an alpha, and alpha is the transparency. So if you're using layers, then you do need to use the alpha, which I might do later on, just for the sake of... Oh, yeah, we've got to draw that sort of icon on the top. I'd better get back to our image here. So I'm in the UV editor at the moment, but I think that's going to be helpful. And if I pin the image, then I can sort of see it in the background, and it will stay there. Actually, that's pinned, is it? When <laughs> That's the problem with Blender sometimes. Is that pressed, or is that pressed? I think that's pressed. Interesting. Okay, I've just not pressed OK on the textures again, haven't I? So I've got to do it again. Oh, silly me. Uh, buckles and straps. Uh, right, don't need the alpha. And press OK this time, finally. Okay, so when I press OK, you see it appears up on the side here. So now I've got my texture set up. And I forgot to turn that brown, didn't I? So it's sort of a grey colour. Uh, I think that was the colour it was given. So you can see that's the colour that's appeared on the strap. The strap is the only thing, this strap here is the only thing that's got that texture. So let's just quickly go to object mode and I'll see, so I'll show you what I mean. So if I click on these things, they they were, they were weren't active, it was only the active texture, as you can see up there, that's got this new material. So I'm going to call this again strap and buckles, there we go. And so this, these ones haven't got any texture, so I can select them all. Let's go through, select them, and that one last, so that it's the one you want to copy from last, so that's the active object. You can see it's got the yellow outline. Control L, Control L, oh, I need to turn the screencast keys on. I keep forgetting to update these screencast keys as well, don't I? So there we go. Control L uh, and materials, and then they all change to that color, and now when I click on each of them, you can see they've got this material up here. Okay, let's just see. Um, oh, I am... Uh, uh, Diana, Diana, yeah, which which way? Uh, <laughs> um, I think when you clear scales, it shrinks objects to origin size while applying makes mesh itself of that size. Not sure quite what people are saying here. Um, I just got the Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate for the Switch, and so far it's a good game, but I'm afraid that it might keep me from progressing in Blender. How do you play video games in moderation? That's a very good question, Creeping Talon. <laughs> very good question. Uh, someone said to me, have a sort of uh, a timer uh, and give yourself 30 minutes. And then uh, because it's quite nice to take a break from Blender as well. So to have something to do in your breaks, but make sure that break time doesn't go into a 12 hour binge session of gaming. I think that's important. Uh, hello, uh, Gouth, Gouth, uh, Gouthier. Bulloes, <laughs> these names are, I just struggle so much. Um, is a good UV is a good UV important uh, for the texturing or doesn't it matter? When you're texture painting, it doesn't matter so much. But I always find it is fairly important when you go down the line. Let's say you want to edit anything or you want to take it to another program to paint. Then yes, good UVs are important. More so when you're adding just a basic. Let's say it's a I don't know, a brick texture to a wall, you've got to unwrap that wall correctly if it's got sort of window places and things because you'll see the seams. That's the so when you unwrap it, you get islands and you don't want to and where the islands meet, that's where the seams are, and you want to be able to sort of hide those uh, those seams as much as possible. So yes, good unwrapping is important for that, not so much for texture painting. 
Um, yes, my stream will be on the YouTube channel later. Um, I, I, it's pretty much automatic. I just press OK at the end and it goes onto my YouTube channel. So hopefully people are finding that all right. So it should be the most recent video. Well, I did release one today, but the second most recent video, you should see the last one. Um, can Yen Blender be used for, to motion graphics? I usually use After Effects. After Effects is a bit simpler. Uh, it's uh, a bit quicker for some things, but Blender, I would say, is better results. That's debatable. If you want anything 3D, then it's Blender. Uh, if you want a sort of 3D zooming around thing. Um, you can do 3D text in After Effects, but it's a pain. Uh, but generally, uh, if you've got 2D graphics, though, After Effects is going to get there much quicker than Blender. Uh, Ducky 3D does loads of uh, motion graphics. I think he wants to, uh, along with a few others, do a sort of motion graphic month. Uh, I haven't. It, that's in the... He's been chatting about it, so that would be a good one to join in with. And it's good to do those sort of challenges over a month because uh, you speak to people, find out new things and all that sort of stuff. So uh, Ducky3D is the person to go for, to for that. His latest Instagram post looked really cool as well. So have a look at that. Uh, have you ever had a graphics tablet uh, break on you? No, no, actually. Oh, actually, the XP Pen, I had loads of problems uh, at work, but that's with Max and that's on a big sort of server. Um, they're all on the server, and I, I just feel like there's compatibility issues more in the uh, the Mac server being on a... Oh, it's just, it was just a pain. I, but I have had it at work, but never at, um, at home, as it were. I've had problems installing them, and it's, again, usually to do with Windows 10 compatibility, other graphics tablets getting in the way. Um, but yeah. Anyway, let's uh, move on. Uh, is there a tutorial for 3D text in Blender? Um, there must be a few. In fact, I'll, I'll make one if there isn't, because it's fairly straightforward. Uh, so uh, let me know, uh, email me to remind me, and I'll try and remember to do that. Okay, so we've unwrapped uh, the, not sorry, I'm um, not unwrapped, added a texture to these. We need to add, add a texture to the bag now as well. So let's go, um, we're in object mode still. So make sure we're in, we are in texture paint mode. There we go. And it all turns purple. Okay, if you've got this sort of purple color like this, that means there's no texture. So we come across to the side here. We can just add a texture in here, of course. So let, in fact, we'll do it the different way, but normally I'll do it this way, uh, just to show you what sort of issues you might get. So in here, Shift A, Texture. This is the old way of doing it, Image Texture. So this is all that automatic thing is doing there. And I can create a new texture here. And see, see this dialog box is the same as the one we got down here. Uh, this is uh, bag um, texture, color. <laughs> um, I spell color the British way. <laughs> Don't know why I said it in that uh, weird accent. So uh, brown base color, I'll try and remember to actually apply it this time. No alpha, no need for an alpha. Perhaps a slightly richer brown. So uh, you've got your tone down the side here and then you've got your um, saturation pushing out further and less saturated in there. So sometimes with low poly work, it's nice to have a, a sort of less saturated, so towards the center of the circle. And for really sort of anime style, you go very saturated. Um, I usually tend to go around here for this sort of work uh, roughly. And then you've got your tone there to give it that sort of uh, different color. I suppose I could also use the sample over here. Uh, oh, I can't do it at the moment, but you, you usually can. I suppose I should sort of match up the color a little bit more, somewhere around there. I, think, I feel like the reference image is a tiny bit orangey, perhaps. We'll see. And let's press OK. OK, did you see my bag, uh, <laughs> my bag change color? We are actually in um, the rubbishy mode at the moment. I'm going to change to... I call it rubbishy mode, solid mode. And I'm going to change across to Eevee. So we've got and can see our textures. Now it's white at the moment because that is uh, the texture. I haven't hooked this up. As soon as I hook this up, wait for it, it turns brown. Okay, so we're all good. Now what hasn't happened is my texture slot hasn't renewed, which is a bit frustrating. So I think that's a bit of a glitch, but it doesn't really matter because all you do is you just go to another mode quickly and then back to texture paint and it appears there. Okay, so don't worry about that if your texture doesn't appear because you've added it in a different way. Um, or you're doing layers or something, you sometimes have to just go to a different workspace setting, and that's fine. Um, like motion graphics tutorials in Blender. Uh, in your opinion, will Blender be used more or less in the game development pipeline in the future? More. Uh, what is it? There's some sort of, um, well, there's a visual effects pipeline thing. Um, where they all have to have a version of Python and all this sort of stuff, and they're they're adhering to that suddenly. I, I don't really know what that means fully, but I've, that's what I've heard. Um, and I think it's going to be similar. They've, they're doing the UDIMs now, um, which is sort of in the game pipeline. So it's going to be used more. 
um, I think, is it's free. <laughs> I mean, it's free. And then 3D Studio Max, which is very common for games or Maya, um, that they're loads of they're loads of money, and uh, they aren't any. They might be slightly better for animation, perhaps Maya. Uh, so uh, it will be used more. It's just slowly going to take over the world, possibly. <laughs> I mean, it's debatable, isn't it? Uh, but it's just amazing to see how many people industries have come on board with Blender. Fantastic stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, do advise people, other people, so at them if you have answers to their questions. That's helpful. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, because it should be, it's a community thing, this. It's not just about me, it's about the community. Uh, it's far more interesting to hear what people are up on, um, on about. Uh, have you ever used RPR, Radian Pro Render? No, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't used really any other renders. I mean, obviously, I've taken the stuff to Sketchfab, so they've got their own renderer. Uh, but I just, did I? I did download the the Disney one. Is that the is that the Disney one actually? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, but uh, is it Disney Pixar? Uh, what, one of them, but never actually used it. Uh, because it's just another thing to learn, and I don't think it's going to add that much to what I do. Uh, so uh, one, one day I'm sure. Uh, I'm doing fine, thank you. Unleashed seventy five. Uh, can you undock Blender windows for multiple monitors? Yes, you can. Uh, window, new window. There you go. Uh, and then you can have a separate one in a different monitor. Um, I've used that in the past and found it a tiny bit awkward. I can't remember why, but I haven't used it in 2.8, to be honest. Uh, do you use Unreal Engine? Only a couple of times. Uh, it's just Unity tends to be a bit more for... Uh, so we use it at, at college, and it was a little bit easier to install on the Mac. So um, we went with Unity um, just for that reason. But I, th I get the feeling that... Um, Unreal might suit me a bit more because um, it's more an artist's. Uh, it it seems to be more suited to artists than uh, programmers. Perhaps uh, don't quote me on that one. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, let's uh, move on with this uh, and have a bit of fun. Now, what I do with my textures, I always bring the specular right down and the roughness right up, and that gives it that sort of really soft hand painted look. Uh, no, it's not hand painted look yet, but it's got that soft look. That's what I need because I need to be able to see roughly what it's going to look like uh, when it's rendered. So that's fairly close. But even closer um, is uh, flat, sh um, smooth shading this, uh, and then it's completely there. But I won't do that yet because I want to be able to see where the edges are. That's important for the moment. So let's go to object mode quickly and switch across to the other objects. So this one, and I can just do it on one, and it will do it on them all. On them all, sorry. Uh, so roughness all the way up, specular all the way down. So we've got a sort of flat shaded feel. These actually look a bit shiny, am I? These should have, yeah, roughness all the way up, specular all the way down. I don't know what I was doing there. Uh, so this has already got its texture on. Um, I might duplicate that because I probably want to do some shading in here on the scrolls. Uh, so I might duplicate that. So we've got the pretty much the base color. I suppose I'll click on these things and change their color a bit. So we'll do that uh, quickly. Let's go across then. I've got my pen out now. Let's just see if the camera's in the right place. And we're all good. Yeah, everybody happy? <laughs> uh, yeah, do, um, if you highlight my name, if you've got a question, I think that will help uh, because then I can see the questions more easily. Uh, and then I won't get confused if you're sort of chatting to someone else in the stream. Uh, it can get confusing with all this stuff going on as I've got here. It's great fun though. Right, I'm going to change this back actually to the image editor. And am I zooming out? What's going on here? Where's my bag gone then? Bag color. Oh, it's bag color there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's getting confused there. There's my backpack. Okay, so we don't need to see uh, the results of the painting here. So I'm all set up for painting, ready to go. Um, object mode, so let's go to paint mode here. Texture paint mode on the buckle. Ah, now I need to pin that. So it wasn't pinned. So which one is pinned? This must be pinned. So when it's light, it's pinned. All right, let's, uh, I'm just gonna go into object mode, select something else, and go into texture paint mode. Now it stays, that's what I, I didn't realize that pin was on by default, so it confused me. Hopefully that sort of makes sense. So if you don't pin it, then it will just disappear. Okay, let, let's use the fill to start off with. Um, Mid-gray for uh, metals. So I'll um, come down here. Can you all see that all right? It's not giving me a lot of space. I might make myself smaller. <laughs> so I'm going to come across here, squish myself in a bit. Is that all right? Everybody still happy and 
not bothered about me being small and move <laughs> uh, move this up a little bit that didn't work to about there hopefully that's okay all good uh, are you not doing the symbol thing in the middle yes I probably will but I'll paint that on uh, hopefully paint, be able to paint it on we'll see how we get on um, we'll, yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes and see how the bag looks um, without it to start with uh, and then yeah figure it out I might not go as complicated I might just do a little sort of symbol or something we'll see how we go um, I might even be able to sort of um, paint something uh, as if it's uh, etched into the leather instead so it's, uh, we'll see um, keep trying to keep it simple but keep to the concept art as much as I can if that makes sense okay so what are we on we're on the buckle and we're going to fill it in with mid gray there we go oh now it changed both so the buckles are in the same place I couldn't remember whether I unwrapped those together or not so they are together that's good and mid gray very slightly darker I think somewhere around there uh, so I say mid gray that's mid gray and it's got no saturation so what I mean by saturation is some color and you can change that here you can just put the saturation down to zero and you know it's going to be uh, in the middle okay hopefully that makes sense and just d keep double checking to make sure everybody can actually see uh, the screen because I, I have this habit of being in the way uh, hopefully that makes sense okay are you fond with the idea with model February <laughs> uh, yes but I just wouldn't be able to do it unfortunately I think that's a great idea I love those sort of things but um, I'm just so busy uh, I've just had another job come in uh, it's a filming job this time and I'm sort of steering clear of filming stuff I don't do as much of it as I usually do um, used to do um, but uh, I, it's an old client who I um, it, uh, we get on really well so I, I want to be able to do that for them um, but generally I, t I steer clear of filming work nowadays so that sort of filming is in camera work very basic stuff sort of um, simple things anyway onto the strap let's just I'm just filling in the base colors the strap should have the same um, color as the bag so here we go with the sample S to sample and can you see it Im um, immediately changed the color I didn't tap so if I press S and then tap that will add it to my color palette if I had one. Oh, I do have one there we go so I've got a color palette now do I want to bring a color palette in it's probably no we'll, we'll cr I suppose if you want to be able to bring one in you go file I'll bring one in to show you how it's done file append uh, and then oh, it always turns up there <laughs> file append bring it in here let's go up and let's go to something like walls I think I've got a color palette from there export 10 and then palettes there you go palettes palette 001 press append and now we can choose that palette and it's got all my colors that I was using for Atlas Empires it's very helpful because then I've got the browns that I um, use there so I probably will just use that but I'll sample this anyway so sample and add that in and adds it in at the bottom here hopefully that makes sense so make sure so the only thing is when you sample like that so I'll sample this gray as well tap that and do you notice it's gone it's still on the brown so it's it's added to my palette but it hasn't updated it there but if you just press S like that uh, without tapping or without left clicking if you're just using a mouse then um, it will pick up that color without adding it to your palette hopefully that's making sense that's uh, stumped me for ages until someone online told me that and it's imp improved my workflow a lot um, wouldn't the symbol look better as an object rather than painted it may well do we'll have to wait and see um, see how we get on are you going to leave the bands like that or move them yeah I think they're okay other people think they're okay let me know if you think the bands are okay I'll give you a pause for a moment and see what other people are saying can you customize your paintbrush colors like for example the color a blue light into the mesh uh, so you're thinking of an emission uh, so I could paint on an emission yes you'd, you'd change things around in the node editor you'd create a new texture you'd bring it in mix the nodes up so that was the emission node and use the factor it, it gets quite complicated uh, I'll probably do a tutorial on that I think J&M has some good tutorials on that sort of thing so you might want to check his stuff out uh, bands looking good bands are okay that's great I, I don't really want to change them at this stage um, so um, I, I, I could have possibly added a bit more character of it sort of flying off in this head um, it's going to be seen from about here that sort of angle and I think that's there's got enough variation at that point I think 
<clears throat> okay. Oh, 175. Oh, that's 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 a good number. Love that. And uh, <laughs> it's it, it, we um, we I think we got up to this sort of number last time, so it's fantastic. Um, let's have um, the strap next. So do you notice how I'm having to go um, object mode, texture paint, uh, and then fill in with that color? So I'll just um, fill the strap in while I'm here. So it disappeared. So I might give it a really tiny different shade. No, I won't actually. <laughs> there we go. Leave it, leave it as it is. Um, but can you see this object mode? Select the other one, texture paint mode, and then I can fill it in with the color. And that might be a bit awkward and annoying for you. If you find that awkward and annoying, you can go up to edit and lock object modes. That will turn that sort of thing off. I'll show you what I mean. So if you turn that off, uh, now when I click on an object, so alt left click, isn't it? Alt left click on an object. Can you see it's saying which object you want? And I haven't labeled them properly. <laughs> so I can't really use that feature, uh, but I should go around labeling them all. Uh, so if I want to select the bag, for example, so I select the bag, alt left click, and that was the only thing for me to select, but can you see here, I could select any of those cylinders or the bag itself, which is cube. Uh, so that's quite good. So Alt, um, uh, left, yeah, left click, and I can then select different objects. And it will go into, so the bag went into object mode, and that was the mode it was in before I changed. Whereas I think the buckle, which is probably this one, oh no, that was in object mode as well. But if I change this to texture paint mode, go back to the bag with alt left click, now go back to the buckle, alt left click, which is cube zero one, uh, that's in paint mode. So I can alt left click on different objects without having to go texture paint and then to um, object. But actually, I don't really mind doing that so much and I don't tend to spend, um, to, to fleet around different objects that much anyway. Uh, are there any other questions? Yes, so will you also live stream any other modeling streams that's not Atlas Empire? I definitely will because we're coming to the end of Atlas Empires. This is one of my last icons. I've got one more to do after this and I probably won't live stream that. Uh, I just thought you might be interested uh, in what's going on with Atlas Empires. I might, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll probably just choose random things to do because that'd be fun. There may be um, other jobs where they don't mind me live streaming as well. Um, it's quite nice to be able to combine the work that I do that I, then I can talk about freelancing and things like that and how it's going and the job um, as well as the model and it's uh, it's also means that I can stream more often because then I don't have to um, be working uh, I can be working while streaming uh, which is which is quite nice isn't it okay so um, I've still got that on so alt left click and that's probably I think that's a plane isn't it that one no it's that one you see that's the problem I'm having because I haven't labeled my objects should I just quickly label my objects? Vote on whether you label your objects or not <laughs> and let me know on the stream. Uh, so um, that's going to be texture paint mode and we're going to fill it in with that metal color just there. And let's get that one. I have no idea which one it is. Cube nine. And it's uh, paint text paint mode and fill it in with that color as well. There we go. So we've got the base colors in. Now we start adding a bit of detail. Do I sound like Olav 3D? I, I, I really don't think I do because uh, I think he's Russian. Is he Russian? Pretty sure. Uh, so I just don't feel like, is he Russian actually? I'm not sure, I might be saying that wrong, but certainly um, sort of Eastern European or uh, Russia, somewhere there. Um, anyway, uh, so all art in Atlas Empires is pre-rendered. Yeah, so it's hand-painted is kind of pre-rendered, sort of. They are having one light in the scene, but hand-painted generally, you, you're minimizing the amount of lights. Uh, when there are lots, not really. When there are lots, not really. <laughs> Hang on, I'm not sure what that meant, art, the art kid. Uh, make habit to give proper names to the objects. Oh, when there are lots for the for the um, naming. Yeah, I, I should be naming them. Uh, I'm, I'm being dreadful. But when there's a ton of objects, yeah, like hard surface modeling, when you've got loads of little bits, do you label them all? It's a real pain, isn't it? Um, what do you think the best way to learn in Blender for new people? Um, yeah, uh, well, I have some courses <laughs> that you can follow through. Uh, Zacharias Reinhardt's course, I think I'll put that in the description because I've got an affiliated link, so you'd be supporting me if you follow that link through. Uh, that's a really good paid for course. It's really fantastic, actually. Um, I'm really impressed with that. Uh, so um, that's a good one to learn. Paid for courses are sometimes a tiny bit better because they 
I say tiny bit. They're, they're a fair bit better. You, uh, you will get there quicker with a paid for course. But if you're really willing to put in the hours and you've got the time and you haven't got the money, then uh, you can go on YouTube and just look at lots of different stuff. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, yes, um, I will do a portfolio review again. At some point, I better run uh, the boost. Uh, Rustin here, first time on the stream. Thank you, very interesting. Glad you're enjoying it. Um, if you're taking a craft, the craft seriously, you name the objects. I know, Rob Colbert. If you're experimenting, maybe not as important. That's my philosophy, and you're quite right. I should be naming my objects. So it's because I'm live streaming, and I don't want people sitting there list, uh, watching me la naming stuff. I should have done that earlier, shouldn't I? Uh, Kevin Vink. With large amount of models, I name the collections. Uh, left arm, etc. Yeah. With small objects, I label e each object. Oh, label the collections, and then yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's generally what I do when I'm doing the sets. I will label the collection. Uh, much easier way. I think it's better to change the color of the bands to be darker, since you'll make them stand out. Um, yeah. So we got the um, things at the front. I will start making them stand out in a, in a moment. Uh, all going well. Um, habit rules. Yeah, quite right. Because when you name them right after creation, it's not that bad. Yeah, I should have done that. Uh, but sometimes you get out of um, out of the names for new objects. People who watch streams expect to see all of the tedious details. Uh, thank you, Nate. I appreciate that. Uh, it makes me feel more comfortable uh, being a little bit boring at times. <laughs> it's fine seeing your name objects. Uh, should I start naming the objects? Then? Uh, come on then. Let's go to object mode. I'm going to name my objects. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is, uh, what what bit of the buckle is that? Uh, buckle small, I'm going to call it. Buckle small uh, left, that is. And then uh, I'll use my mouse for this. I've got my keyboard all the way over here. That's how I have it set up when I'm drawing. And when I'm modeling, I have it in a different place. Uh, so this one is, you see now I've put them in object mode. There we go. Uh, this one is uh, buckle small uh, right. Doesn't matter if I name them badly, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to call this buckle big. I'm going to put them all in object mode so I know that I've selected them. Uh, buckle uh, big right. I mean, you might have a better naming convention than I have here. <laughs> uh, buckle big left. You can always skip the numbers at the beginning as well if you want them to be in a certain order. So this is a bag, main bag. In fact, I'm going to say bag main, then I'll look for bag, you see. so. Uh, and it will appear at the front there, and strap, strap right. Uh, sorry if I misspelled things. I don't worry about spelling too much, certainly, because that will um, do my head in. Um, it's a little bit embarrassing when I'm teaching, actually, sometimes, because uh, because of this, the dyslexia, I do have a little bit of difficulty with spelling. Um, but I generally got away with it for this long, teaching for 15 years or something, got away with it. Uh, Map front and map back. I did actually cover an English lesson for about about two weeks, a covering person, and I found that really tough. Someone came to me and said, how do you spell little d'oeuvres? And I thought, I have no idea. And the internet was not a thing then. You couldn't look it up. In fact, no, it was a thing, actually. Sorry, no, it was a thing. But I didn't even know how to start with hors d'oeuvres. It's a French term if uh, you're unaware of what that is. <laughs> anyway, um, right, so I think I've labelled them all, have I? That wasn't actually as tedious as I thought it would be. Yeah, I think we're there, aren't we? So now I can use that, um, put things into text paint mode, and then we can use that alt-click. Now oh, that is in text paint mode, that one. Oh, alt-click, sorry, I'm not, not actually doing it. There we go. So I can now use, um, what is it, buckle, big, right. There we go. And I can put that into text paint mode. Uh, so alt uh, left clicking uh, is so alt left click here and I'm going to go to the bag but I can put that in text paint mode and then when I go to other things it will be in the mode it was previously in not have to be in object mode to change modes hopefully that was making sense so strap right put that in text paint mode and I'm going to be able to oh, that's the only problem you forget to alt left click and then you fill it in with something uh, strap left text paint mode uh, and I think I've got most of them. If I haven't, that doesn't matter. Uh, hors d'oeuvre. That's right. Yeah. Is um, is that right though? Is uh, is it with an H, uh, or is it, it that is right, isn't it? <laughs> you see, that's. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
Um, anyway, uh, do you happen to like tea, Mr. Abbott? I, um, I, I'm very uh, aware of my health, and I have lots of slight issues with my health as well in terms of uh, stomach troubles and stuff. So I've got a really odd diet, uh, and for that reason, I don't drink caffeine. Uh, so I don't have proper tea. I have uh, rooibos. I think it's called red bush tea from sort of South Africa or something. I think it is, uh, and I I tend to drink that. Uh, what? Uh, yes, with an H. It is with an H. Yeah. Didn't, uh, thank you, Hussam Asila. Uh, what button do you press? When um, you'll have to be more specific. When do you mean? So Alt Left Click is what I'm pressing uh, to go between these objects. Uh, and if I'm if they're in texture mode already, um, so. Uh, buckle big right was in texture paint mode that is now I can start texturing it anyway let's start texturing on the bag let's move ahead so um, the reason I've still got it in flat shading is because I want to be able to see the shading so um, I can grab my brown color so um, we've got that color there and I want to make it a bit darker so I'm going to add some sort of shading in here so it's about there so it's, it's pretty much where this one is actually so I can just make my brush fairly big and I forgot to put it on the um, the actual brush uh, the draw brush I was in fill still excuse me uh, so let's go back to that so um, the fill brush will now have that brown instead of this brown am I making sense to it um, because I changed it in the fill brush instead of the draw brush hopefully I'm not yabbering on too much probably am yeah. so I just come down make some shadows in here I can go across there because uh, I'm just sort of painting behind actually oh no it's not mirrored so I can't mirror uh, any of this. I'm not going to worry too much about this back side. I hope that's all right um, because I don't need to. Uh, a bit of shadow down the bottom here. Now the strength is way too high. I should have. Um, I'm not thinking straight because I'm thinking about the stream as well. So the strength is way too high there, um, but that should be fine. Uh, just giving this a little bit of shading around the place. So in where the crevices are, behind the strap, can you see now the straps are coming forward a bit because there's a bit of shading behind them. So very light on my brush. I'm, uh, I need a camera behind me so you can see that. But I'm, I'm using the brush really lightly at the moment. And we need quite a lot of darkness up here. Some around the bottom there. And in here. Got my brush fairly big, so I'm doing the sort of big shapes right now. In this gap in here. So sort of painting in the ambient occlusion, basically. So um, some people s will say, well, why don't you just use the ambient occlusion node and then bake that? It's just not the same. <laughs> you can do that sort of thing. And that's what, if you're painting with something like Substance Painter, that's what it will uh, roughly do. Um, sort of um, see the ambient occlusion and then you can sort of paint bits on, I think. As far as I understand, anyway, that's what I understand from Substance Painter. I haven't used it enough to know fully. Okay, so can you see there's a tiny bit of shading there? Uh, probably a little bit too much underneath there. And if it's too much anywhere, so if I press S now to sample that color, and with my strength low, I can just sort of blend that color into that, uh, that darker patch there. Hopefully I'm making sense and not talking rubbish to you. There we go. I start going a bit quieter. I don't know, I must have watched way too much uh, Bob Ross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my voice just starts going quieter uh, after a little while. Um, uh, the icons in Atlas Empire now are drawn, I think. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. If I give you five pounds and tell you to buy and eat a burger with it, uh, would you do it? No, I wouldn't. Um, I'm really strict about it. Um, so uh, I don't have any refined carbohydrates. I don't have any refined sugars. Um, it's all sort of like whole foods they say um, I'm even a little bit careful like brown pasta even I won't eat that just because um, I think I was getting a bit sort of pre-diabetic eating way too much sugar and my energy levels were just going all wrong uh, and it's important to me because I play a lot of sport I'm going to bring my brush down a little bit and just paint a bit closer in to the crevices with my dark brush might go a tiny bit darker you see there just going a bit darker but still low strength and now going a bit closer into the crevices oh that didn't go well I should that's the only thing. Um, in sculpting, we've got the new normal brush, haven't we? Um, so it sort of shows you exactly where you are. It hasn't appeared in texture painting yet. I hope it will soon. Anyway, I was talking about uh, sugar. <laughs> so uh, that's the first thing I gave up was sugar to try and balance out my energy levels. It made a massive, massive difference. Um, I lost a tiny bit of fat and just my energy levels 
little bit much better. I'm quite a thin person anyway, so I don't have much fat to lose. But, you know, it, it, it makes a bit of a difference. There's no need for extra fat on your body, especially if you're really into your sports, like I am. <clears throat> Played a, f- a lot of football. Football's my, uh, my thing, as it were. Um, so I'll be playing that tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to a game. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, enough of my... <laughs> <laughs> enough of my uh, diet I think well actually do you know um, I do feel it's really important that um, because it's really common I think for the like my games design students they have a dreadful diet and that's not it's just not good for you uh, I'm sure that doesn't help for depression anxiety which we're seeing loads more of uh, as each year goes by we get more depression more anxiety coming from our students I know there's lots of pressures as well I'm not saying there isn't um, but I think diet is a lot to do with that as well. Um, so uh, if you are finding things a bit tough, it could be your diet because your diet affects things like your circadian rhythm, is it, your sleeping and stuff. Um, and it's a big problem for people like um, us that spend all our time on the computer. If you're not getting much exercise, you, uh, it's really you're not using up that energy if you're drink, drinking like 12 cans of Red Bull or whatever it is, or Monster and those sort of things. So watch out for that please um i say it all the time to my students but i wouldn't have listened at that age <laughs> anyway i'm just sort of painting these bits in with the darkness and already it's kind of looking nice isn't it, it, it it's got that sort of flat look but and um, so we'll bring out some of those um, highlights in a bit and we'll have fun with that uh what would you do if sammy comes back <laughs> i wonder if he's here watching us sammy are you there oh thank you very much uh Maruz. Stefanowski, that's really kind of you. Uh, what is a PLN? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you know I recognise uh, the face for some reason? That's interesting. <laughs> Maybe you look like someone I know. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, liking the texture painting, glad to hear it. I- I'm really enjoying it, so I'm glad that you are as well. Uh, yeah, what will I do if uh, Sammy comes back? Uh, he-, he might come back. I did have a, a slight chat with him the other day uh, on... Um, a Skype to say thanks for joining us in the stream. <laughs> I, I love Sammy. He's he's a really nice guy. Really nice guy. He's very young to be a CA, CEO as well. You won't believe it. I mean that's just so cool. Ah, there we go. I recognise the face because uh, it's XRDJ6C. Uh, so you are. Um, he is <laughs> uh, uh, one of my um, admin uh, in the, on the Discord server. So if you want to uh, chat to him, then you can go across the Discord. Uh, and yeah, it does uh, some cool work and he's always supporting me. I really appreciate that. That's so cool of you. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, yes, don't, um, who is Sam? Sammy is my boss and he turned up on the live stream the other day. So it's kind of amusing. Uh, he's the CEO of Cerberus International, who um, I think um, own, uh, create Atlas Empires. Oh, I'm being a bit rough here around these these bits um, I mean I can tidy them up as we go I'll use the smear brush a little bit not too much the smear brush uh, but I will use it a little bit and um, uh, other yeah uh, and we'll tidy the bits up can you see so if I if I let's say paint here and do that can you see how it goes across but then won't hit that bit so you have to be really careful where you're painting so again if I'm looking here can you see oh it, it did it that time it did it pretty well actually but there uh, there's a gap there now. That's why you tend to have that sort of uh, sloping inwards uh, so that you can, uh, so you, you don't sort of miss bits when you're painting. It's easy to paint when it uh, slopes inwards like this. Can you see these two are going inwards slightly? Uh, even though in reality that was probably bulge outwards, but it is so much easier to paint without that. Okay, now for the highlights. Let's find a light color. This probably, um, I mean, we could go a bit, oh, actually, I've forgotten the highlights around the edge. Yes, I will do that. So I want to grab, in fact, that's a useful tool to show you all what's going on. So um, can you see my reference image has this sort of gold around it? I'm just thinking, will that work? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go for it because I think it will do all right. Uh, do you recommend using a drawing tablet, uh, Thunder? Uh, yes, I definitely do. In fact, I've got some links in the description. They are affiliated links, so you'll be supporting me if you go for them. But um, uh, what's come out recently, the Wacom One. So it's a Wacom screen, which is the, basically the same as what I'm using here. It's a tiny bit smaller. Um, I, I mean, I can't really show you what I'm using here because of the camera and things, but a uh, tiny bit smaller, but it's got it's got Wacom on the name on it. And that means it will probably work 
<laughs> all these sort of XP Pen, Gamma, and UG, so forth. There's always slight compatibility compatibility issues. So I got sent one recently, an XP Pen, and I, I sell them straight away because uh, I've got a better tablet here. Um, I appreciate getting them, but I do sell them on to support the channel. Uh, buying a new mic, that's the next thing I'm going to buy. And then a new webcam is the next thing. Anyway, um, so, but they, they contacted me saying, oh, we're having loads of issues. And I'm thinking, oh, it's such a pain uh, that I've got to try and talk them through the issues. Not that it's their fault, it's the compatibility is just a real pain. Um, could you show your graphics tablet? It might unplug if I do that. Um, but you can see it in my, uh, where I talk about my kit. There's a video on that. Um, it's a little bit harder to find, but if you do the search on YouTube, you can find out about it. It's a Wacom uh, Mobile Studio Pro, so you could just look that up, and that's, that's what it looks like. Um, in the future, I will have a camera from behind as well. It's all going to be amazing, I'll tell you. This, this channel is going to go uh, just uh, so awesome. Anyway, uh, in order to um, isolate these faces, let's do that. Let's go to Edit Mode and Face Mode so with three. So let's grab the faces, Alt, left click. And so I'm in edit mode doing this, and I'm grabbing the faces. So I've got all those faces there. Then when I go back to texture paint mode and press this magic button here, I've isolated them. Now I can use the fill, and it's gold. So we want not too yellowy, that's a bit. So can you see that saturation there? If I bring it in, get a bit closer, I'm gonna come down in the brightness, and across towards the oranges a bit more, somewhere around there. Let's see how that looks. Well, hey, look how different that looks on screen to there. It's, it's fascinating, isn't it? Um, is it just me, or is that blender being weird? A bit more orange now. Getting a bit closer. And sometimes you have to turn this off to see what it's going to look like. That's not too bad. It's not close to that yet, um, but it's a good base, and that will be fine. Because the richness will come out when we start painting. Now, the problem we have, you can see it's got that sort of square, rigid top. Do I add another loop cut in here? I think, I think it's worth showing you what to do and how you can add to your shape and the effect it will have. So um, if I go back to edit mode with this shape, I can edit my shape. So if I do Control R and do a loop cut across there, and I can drag it, and it's not affecting my UVs. There's not much happening anyway, but it's not actually affecting my UVs because it's an edge slide. And that's okay. So I can put this here. Um, there's not. I can I can tidy these up as well in a second. I'll show you that. But um, then I can grab in the Z, but just don't go too far overboard with this um, because you are going to stretch your textures really slightly. And it's a bit naughty what I'm doing there, but I think that does look that bit better. So it hasn't got that really sharp edge there, um, which may be a bit of an issue. Uh, one thing I was wondering is why uh, moves the camera position on the stream every time. It was on the bottom right. It's because I'm in a different workspace. Uh, so um, I was down here, but then you wouldn't see the backpack. So I suppose I could move this window over to here, but when I go into texture workspace, it's how it's set up. So I thought that would make more sense. Uh, keep you on your toes as well. You've got to be thinking, where is he? Where is he? Oh, just jump out at you. <laughs> uh, doesn't it look like a flexible chest? No. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe it does a little bit. Just a bit. I like it. I like it at the moment. <laughs> uh, why don't you use the color probe directly on the picture? To, um, yeah, I mean, I could do that. Uh, it doesn't. It's it's not as easy as you think because these pixels, you you end up picking one pixel, and I might choose the bright bit, and then it will go really yellow. Choose the dark bit, and it will go orange. So it's better. I find it easier to do it by eye. That's a good point, though. You can, yeah, the color picker you can use. Um, uh, I don't actually need to tidy up this mesh, although look at that. See, that's changed into an engon, and that's going to cause us problems. And so I go GG and edge slide. And you can edge slide, and it doesn't affect the UVs. It, it, it moves your UVs around with um, where they're supposed to be. So that's a really useful feature in Blender. Um, so I can get rid of these so it's not causing too much of an issue. So they've all edge slide them all back into position so it's not causing us too much problem. Okay, and then we've still got that sort of loop cut around there. I'm not going to worry about that side too much, so we're going to see it from about here, that's fine. Okay, so um, on to the highlighting. Uh, oh, actually, one other thing. When you fill in, can you see how pixelated that is? Not really completely sure why that is, but um, when you're selecting one edge, so if I go back to paint, text paint mode and check, click that button, it's that edge it's, it's not happy with. So I'm going to click off that and then 
use the smear. And then it just blurs out the edges, just that little bit. Make my brush a bit smaller. There we go. <laughs> uh, try not to swear uh, techies gaming because then I have to um, okay it. Oh no, it's I'm getting that um, error message again. Am I still around? It's saying YouTube is not receiving enough video to main sm maintain smooth streaming. It's fr very frustrating. There's very little I can do about my internet. And I thought doing this a bit earlier, I might get away with it, but um, maybe Friday night is not a good one because we, we actually went down last Friday. If the stream goes down at all, um, I'll just bring it straight back up as soon as I can, as soon as my internet comes back. I'm really sorry if it does. Uh, and there's there's nothing I can do about it. It's such a killer. Um, I did think even about buying a business line, but it's the same line. So uh, they'll just compensate me if I go offline. That's it's not really helping, is it? That didn't work very well. It's getting a little bit glitchy around here. I'm wondering if I've got any doubles up there. No, it's just getting a bit glitchy for no reason. That's the thing with the painting. Um, it does need a bit of work. It will go glitchy in places. Oh, that's, that looks dreadful. Can you see the smear brush that I'm using here? Smear brush. And that's very helpful. So it smoothed it out quite nicely. It's not so, weirdly, it's not much of an issue down here, is it? But it's, I think it's still, I can sort of soften it a bit. And I think that helps. Now having these as separate objects is, is helping me slightly, isn't it? Because um, I'm not sort of overlapping them and I can paint behind them nice and easily. There we go. Okay, so let's just have a look down here. I'm going to go on to the highlights in a second, I think. I'm just making sure that we're all good. Yep, so highlights now. Uh, <laughs> Grant Abbott is the only 40-year-old I watch on YouTube. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, maybe all these gamers that you watch are actually really old uh, and they're uh, using an avatar. <laughs> what am I talking about? Um, uh, the edge issue is to do with the UV mapping, uh, UV padding. Huh, okay. Uh, you have to set your texture painting with a bit more padding. No, it's, it's not actually because uh, it's on the same... Um, or is it actually? No, there's no uh, there's no um, seam there, so it isn't that actually. But that's a good point. I can see why you'd think that. That does make sense. Uh, question about the coloring: the colors change when you look from the material preview and rendered. Why do you work through uh, the material preview? I'm working in Eevee at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm trying to figure that out. I mean, uh, oh, material preview here. Yes, because I want to be able to see the edges. Uh, so I've got it on flat shading, going through the material, just so I can see the edges at the moment, and then I will change it later on. I, th I think I understand now. Uh, hi, Grant Abbott. Mentioned yesterday I was working through your C Shack tutorial. I encountered an issue with the lighting shadows tab doesn't show clipping start end. Yeah, uh, that's because they updated Blender and took it out. I think it's now under. Where is it under actually? There is a there is a clipping for shadows, isn't there? It's under lighting. Maybe I'll it, remind me a bit later on. Maybe if I get to the lighting. Otherwise, um, it, it don't don't panic about it too much. The the clipping distance. I think it's in another setting. Maybe someone will say on here. Actually, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, just having a look at third circle on the top. Is that what you mean? Uh, on the top side. Um, on my navy. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, so. Uh, let's go back to the paintbrush and start painting some highlights. So, I mean, the easy way to do this, um, let's go back to the tool settings up here, is to use the, the mix, uh, sorry, uh, use the screen. Uh, so I've got that sort of light color there. I'll choose a, a sort of orangey brown now. And um, in fact, no, be sensible, talk, talk sensibly. Uh, so I'm on this sort of dull ground, uh, brown, but when you go a bit lighter, you can sort of go across to um, the, um, the, the opposing color, not the opposing colors, what's the, the next door colors, they've got a certain name, complementary, it's not complementary, there's a certain name for them anyway. Um, Ali Sino, remember me? I, I don't, I'm afraid, sorry Ali, uh, <laughs> but it's nice to see you uh, back. Uh, sorry, I don't remember, there's uh, so many people to see, so, uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, and you can then, sort of with the screen brush, just, um, sort of paint in the top. You do have to be a bit careful of that. Can you see that how I didn't hit that last bit there? So you have to go from an angle 
So I'm just choosing the top bits here and doing the screen brush. So that's one way of sort of highlighting and just sort of getting areas that are going to protrude. But the other way is to actually sample the color, uh, make it a bit brighter and go to the mix uh, brush, which is a bit more precise in terms of colors. So we can sort of use the mix brush down the side here. And so any edge that's protruding, so up the top here, let's see, I must have hit that with the um, the brush at the top there. So it's it's got a bit too much of the lightness there. I might have to use the smear brush to smear it in a bit. There we go. And back to the text draw brush. So just getting the edges. And I, I don't want to go on the gold bit just yet. Um, let's make that nice and big. Go across the top there. Nice and lightly. I've still got, I'm still using the material output. That's so I can see the sharpness of my um, edges. And again, low strength, uh, just getting those edges. I'll do a bit over here as well. There we go. Oh, that's good fun, isn't it? Do enjoy doing this. Okay, so you can see I'm just sort of getting a rough outline, probably a bit too much on this side. Uh, needs a bit more on the top, but I need to change the color for this bit. Don't I? So I've got the sample that. In fact, I need to add that color to my color palette, so I can just press plus there, or I can press S, then left click, and you can see it's done it twice. So I can click on that and remove it. That's how you use the colors. Uh, got a split, uh, see you around, hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Hussam Asila. Uh, appreciate you being able to spell hors d'oeuvres for me. I much appreciate that. It's, I mean, that is well confusing, isn't it? How could anybody spell it? How do the French cope? <laughs> uh, so uh, let's smooth that out a bit, move that in. Uh, okay, so a uh, lighter yellow. So ooh, uh, on the smear brush, go back to the yellow. Um, so on that texture and then just a bit lighter. And when you're going lighter, like I say, you go to the sort of the next color along to give it a bit of color variation and um, sort of cooler colors and warmer colors and stuff. Um, hopefully I'm making sense with that. Uh, you kind of have to look that one up with cooler colors and warmer colors. Actually, I'm probably going, maybe I should go more towards the yellows. Let's have a look for a warmer color there. Can you see that sort of uh, a little bit brighter there? Maybe. That's the only thing, when I'm down here, no, I don't know. What do I say? Might be going overboard here, but just a little bit around the edge. And around here. Uh, yeah, I'm using, uh, I'm always using the display tablet. I don't use a, a graphics tablet, but I mean, display tablets are often called graphics tablets um, as well, which is very confusing. But I try and say display tablet, uh, which hopefully makes more sense. So just moving back, uh, getting a sense of what it looks like. When you have lots of different colors in your scene, uh, like this, so we've got a yellow and a brown now, that's when you, it's easier to use the screen brush and the multiply brush. So um, we've got a bit of an outline there. I'll jump across to the straps now uh, and make sure they've got a bit of this as well. So uh, where are we? Um, Alt right click, Alt left click, sorry, Alt tap for me. Uh, strap right, there we go. And uh, let's, uh, okay, I'll start using the multiply brush this time. And just at the top there, Give it a bit of shading in where the strap is, uh, not the strap, the buckle is there. Oh, okay, now um, the multiply brush does um, take color from what you've got um, over here. That's actually quite a useful color, um, but it's very light. Uh, so I want to go slightly reddish. So the, I give a slight reddish tinge uh, in there to some of the shadows. I mean, you can even go a bit bluish, interestingly, um, and that sort of will darken it a bit more um, as well. Uh, blues are quite good for darkening things. They, they're cool colors, you see. That's what I'm trying to say earlier. Am I making sense with that? Cool colors, warm colors? But so shadows, um, oh, I'm just going to quickly do something. Alt middle click will zoom your camera into that area. That's a really handy tool when you're texture painting. So cool colors um, like blues and things, uh, they can create nice shadows. So I'm just Let's just quickly zoom out and see what it looks like. See, looking lovely, isn't it? Just See, so just really thinking, where is the light going to hit? It's coming down from the top. Where is it going to hit? Where is it not going to hit? 
where is it going to create shadow and certainly down the sides here a little bit down the side here love it delightful okay so we're getting there with the strap and can you see that um, there's no ambient occlusion turned on or anything like that it's just doing it uh, all through the painting um, and you can be a bit more creative then like I am with this I'm using cool colors to create that sort of uh, interest I'm not sure that I'm finding the right words today but uh, hopefully you get what I mean all right let's go to the other strap alt uh, left click strap left it is a good job I label those. Thanks for convincing me to label these things. I appreciate that. Uh, any other questions, make sure you um, uh, tag my name with questions, and then I can look across and see whether there's a question instantly. Uh, that'll make it easier. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so I was going to... Uh, I've remembered. Uh, saw in some painting tutorial that you should use opposite colours for shadow. Uh, so not necessarily opposite. That's what I was getting my, confused in my head, and I hope I haven't confused anybody there. But uh, you go towards the cool colours. Um, and the warm colors are over here, the oranges and the yellows, and the cool colors are the blues. So you tend to go to the cool colors for um, shadows, which is what I'm doing a bit of here. Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Soul Skinner, for your question and um, thoughts. All right, so just doing some... This is a little bit tricky, isn't it? Because um, the strap this time, I didn't give it that curvature, which you sometimes give, and then it makes it awkward because you have to come round to the side to paint it like I am here. Oh, that's not gone as well, that one, has it? Can you see? I've... It's not too bad to texture it like that, but I think I want to uh, go off the multiply, sample this color, and just... And so basically, I'm kind of rubbing out by doing that. So it's like an undo in a way, isn't it? It's a bit better. Uh, do you know what I completely forgot to do is add some variation of colors. Oh, what an idiot. That's usually my first step, and it's um, it's because I'm streaming, I think. I'm forgetting to do things, so... Um, uh, just seeing what people are saying. Uh, do I ever use a bump map to add texture details? Yes, I do, but not in this case. When you're texturing game objects, you generally don't because you draw in the bump with light and dark. I'll, I'll do more of that in a second. Um, you'll see what I mean. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to click on the bag. Alt, left click. Um, oh, let's try that again. Alt, left. Something happened weird there. No, it's, cl it's clicked on the bag. That's all right. Um, uh, in your free time, would you like to do a model collaboration? I would, but um, it, I, I did one with J&M, uh, but I'm just so strapped for time, strapped for time, um, that I'm, str I'm struggling to fit those things in. But I reckon um, as the Atlas Empires thing uh, quietens down a bit, then I'll start doing more things like that. I would like to do that. I was talking to someone the other day, actually, um, about collaborating with them possibly but they do paid for tutorials where I'm not sure I'm going to go down that line or not really um, I kind of want to steer clear of it a bit if I can so just a slight variation in color uh, strength down a fair bit brush nice and big just uh, dab in a few different colors so um, it's creating uh, that variation in the texture and you can go quite wild with this as long as you've got a low strength so a bit of red in there can you see it's just bringing tiny specks of red out, a bit of blue. So really um, very random, but they could be the reflections. So there's an environment around this thing uh, that are sort of like the reflections and, uh, and so forth. I'm just going around the back as well, just in case I want to um, smarten that up. I don't want to uh, completely avoid doing the back, uh, but um, I suppose I am a bit, aren't I? Maybe I because you never know when you might want to use the model again and stuff But I suppose it is Atlas Empire's property at this point, so I can't really but I could I suppose use it adapt it that sort of thing can I? Um, Anyway uh, So going around different colors try and, uh, you don't need to go too saturated like that Can you see that saturation is probably a bit too much? So I'm keeping in the same saturation, but I, I think that's just habit and sort of fear of going too far but uh, Maybe maybe not maybe maybe not so just offering that bit of variation. I'll use do the same on the straps now, on the strap there. Just tapping around, tapping about with these things. This strap, strap left. And just a bit of variation in the color. Can you see that? That just adds a little bit, and then it's more that I can play with when I'm um, adding bits more, more bits in. 
I can't quite explain the importance of that, but it's really important. <laughs> uh, do you think the side pockets need to uh, need the golden seams? Uh, they haven't got any on there, but I feel like it might need it. That's what I was thinking. Does this need um, the golden seam around there? Let me know. Uh, do I need to come round this? It feels like it needs something, definitely. I was thinking maybe some stitching because then I could show a different technique. Um, but does it need the golden seam? Let me know in the um, comments. Um, how about going over it with a normal map later and bake it over? A normal map, um, oh, so um, a sort of bump, so give the texture a bump. I could do, possibly. Um, but then I would need to isolate it so the strap was smooth and other areas didn't have the bump. Probably not in this case. Um, I would prefer to do that with, um, oh, golden stitch is a good idea, um, with things like uh, the, um, uh, sculpting if I'm going to do normal maps and things. Yeah. Uh, why B paint? Uh, don't know the add-on, uh, but sure. But it's pure non-add-on texture painting in Blender right now. Uh, this, uh, yeah, so I'm... I'm just doing a vanilla blender, as it were, uh, not um, any add-ons. Uh, but there is the add-on. But in fact, I've spoken to someone who does a blender PBR painting add-on, and they wanted me to have a look at it, but I didn't have time at the time. I'm hoping to go back and have a look at that again at some point. Uh, neon green trim. I'm not so sure about that one. Core blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, Stitching. So people are going for the stitching, so maybe some gold stitching around there. Then we can see what that looks like. Um, I'll come on to that in a bit. Uh, so at the moment, oh, we're, we are an hour and a quarter in. That's surprising to get this far. Usually I do this a lot quicker than this. I say a lot quicker, but I usually get to the more detailed stage a bit quicker. Uh, what is a good maximum amount of verts for a mobile game character? Probably around 1,000, maybe 1,500. Uh, I would say around there. Uh, actually, that's still possibly a bit high. Actually, about 1,000. I'm just trying to remember what I've done recently. That wasn't from mobile game, that character. So 1,000 is probably a bit too high, probably about 700, 800, somewhere around there, I think. Uh, something other than gold, you think? I, I'd quite like the colour scheme. So it's got three colours at the moment, the sort of grey, which is going to be silver, um, yellow and brown. Uh, obviously the white as well, but I'm trying to stick to that. So um, I don't want to go into any other colours around here, I don't think. Uh it, the Shade Smooth is not on yet, but I was just thinking to myself, that's a probably about time. So, uh, into object mode. This is the only thing. I've got to go around now each object. Is that the best way? I think, can I change? I'm not sure I can. I'm just, just double checking. I think I can, I'm going to select all here, Shade Smooth. Now if I go back to Texture Paint mode, is that going to, yeah, it's, it's kept them all as. I'm not sure it has actually. That'll be interesting. Alt, left click. And now I'm on the bag again. Okay, so I can do that. So I can go into tech layout mode, shade smooth. Can you see it's it's lost its, uh, it's like this line along here and it's lost a bit of its shape, but we can easily bring that back. Um, I probably should have highlighted this a bit more uh, and I'm gonna do that now. So on the bag with this, um, the bag selected, I'm gonna go a bit more detailed now with the highlights. So uh, again, nice uh, sort of warmish colors probably going a bit towards whites because I want this to be shiny, don't we? It's sort of got a shinier, uh, more worn feel to it. Uh, I'm still on mix, silly. Uh, let's go to screen. Yeah, I will go to screen now. I'll up it just slightly. Usually about two uh, is my magic number for doing this. Uh, I'm having a thing. Is that the best way? I think it wants to glare off both sides a little bit. So I'm just going to bring that down. I have to be a bit careful, just make sure I'm... Because I probably should have done this with flat shading, really. There, you see, you have to be careful of those sort of areas around there. So this is going to get a good bit of shine on the very angle here. Let's just see what that looks like. That's looking okay, isn't it? So I'm, when you're close in, you can be reasonably rough with this stuff. And it still looks okay. Bigger brush just to get that top there. Just looking at my messages on my phone. <laughs> now the light won't catch it at the bottom here so much. We can do a tiny bit of a highlight as if it's got a, a bit of a reflection from the floor just there. Let's just move around a little bit, make sure we are getting that corner okay. 
So a tiny bit there, but more so in here where it's going to catch the light from the sun coming down on it. Okay. Hopefully I'm making sense. See, and the thing about the multiply brush, it's going quite far, isn't it, towards the white. Um, it's not, like I was saying about warm colours and everything, it's not so um, warm then, is it? Um, let's again do that sort of highlight down there. Just got to be a bit careful because, again, that's seeing from the corner there. I mean, that's sort of bad practice, what I'm doing a little bit. I'm going to use a smooth brush to... Uh, and, yeah, it probably didn't want it smooth shaded, but that's fine. And coming around here. So this top bit's getting the sun. So it's a bit brighter. Okay, so you can see it's sort of working, isn't it? Yep, so about this sort of distance here. And we're starting to get uh, quite a nice look. Um, again, it's... Do I probably want to... Yeah, no, that's, I think we're okay with that. All right. Just having a sort of think about these things. Maybe a little bit extra along here. Sort of a more of a highlight there. Hopefully I'm making sense. Uh, thank you, Ch Chun Sun. Uh, you're the best. Many thanks for the tutorial series. Um, is there a platform where we can share the results with others to compare? I'm curious what other people did. Generally, the Discord server um, is, yes, as but Bluetooth just mentioned there. Um, <laughs> uh, Albuquerque. Uh, hello, Just Chris. Uh, nice of you to join us. All right, so let's just have a look at this. I mean, it's a bit sharp on the edge there. I think we're doing all right. Now I can go in a bit thinner even and do a really sharp highlight in places. Can you see that there? And this is where you may possibly, oh, what's going on with the mouse there? You may start seeing some pixels. So if I go really tight and it's only painting on a few pixels, but uh, can you see that that sharp highlight, it makes something even shinier, if that makes sense. So this is sort of brushed, um, uh, not as shiny, rough, that's <laughs> the word I'm looking for. Um, a whack on Mobile Studio Pro tag, Leduc Design, uh, is what I'm using at the moment, but I'm I, I'm recommending the Wacom one at the moment because it's only um, four hundred dollars, I think it is. There's a link in the description. It is an affiliated link, so you'd be supporting me if you click on it. Um, but um, it it will be the same as mine, a little bit smaller, but for that price, I'm quite impressed with them really. Uh, doing it for that price, I think that's really good. Um, so there's a US link and a UK link. I thought I'd put that in there just in case anybody wants to buy it from my links and I'd get a tiny bit of income. <laughs> so I'm very mercenary like that. Okay, so that's that's good, that's sort of highlighted. Can you see what I'm doing there with the highlighting? Um, <clears throat> can you tell me how to use masking when texture painting? Do you know, I very rarely use masking. I tend to use the, um, the edit mode more, um, but uh, in fact, that is the masking brush, isn't it? Yeah, so... Um, you know, I'm a bit reluctant. I'm going to save my work, actually. So um, the main thing you need to save, actually, I'm going to open up my image now. That's the best place. Maybe I'll put that, I'll put my image thing behind my face. And so you won't see what I'm doing here, but I'm just getting the you um, the image editor up here so that I can see my base um, bag color so I so I can save it easily and know it's saved. I'll just, I will actually show you what I'm doing there <clears throat> very briefly. So um, it's just there. I've got a little star on it. Um, and I'll, every now and again, I'll look across there and save my work. That's all I want to be able to do. Um, yep. So let's image save. And uh, I haven't even saved it once yet. That's dreadful, isn't it? Uh, inventory icon save. Okay. So I've saved my work. Now I'll I'll do some, and I will save because I don't think I don't think I've edited the shape much, but I've I've edited the names, haven't I? So let's uh, save add, and I'll just add one to that. Save. <coughs> Okay, so um, the masking tools. So yes, you've got the mask here. I'm sure you've got a mask brush as well, um, but we should be able to mask missing stencil detected. Okay, don't know what's going on there then. Shortcut shift. Uh, yeah, I, um, it's something I don't use much. Um, so sorry about that. I can't tell you much about the mask. Um, I thought it was a, a block mask thing. I'm just going to quickly check that. Ah, there we go. So it's expecting a stencil, but I thought the stencil stuff was down um, here. There's there's the mask thing. 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, I do sometimes use mask brushes, uh, but you can mask areas so you can't paint on them. But I prefer just to use this tool here with the faces. Uh, uh, maybe good to put your camera view. Yes. Um, do you know, I'm going to create a third window here. So we can see the camera view because I, I might change this in a second. And I'll change this to the 3D view. Um, I haven't actually set up the camera yet. I just know roughly where I want it. Um, let's get that on Eevee as well. So it's going to be, what do people think? Around there, I'm thinking. Look good? Let me know. <laughs> Is the gold thing plastic? It looks like plastic. Yeah, it does. Um, it's going to look uh, a shiny sort of leather. Um, so, um, but then... I mean, do you get sort of bright yellow plastics? I'm not really sure. Maybe I ought to look at some reference images at that point. In fact, it's worth saying, I have got some other reference images. So I'm just gonna um, move this across over here. So you can see, if I go full screen on this, you can see I've got lots of leather things um, here, but none of them are yellow. Um, this is what I'm probably gonna be thinking about the most. I haven't actually looked at this yet, um, but it will be there if I need it. Uh, the buckle there as well, worn leather. Um, but. Uh, uh, no yellow leather to look at, but generally that sort of thing is kind of plasticky, isn't it? But they didn't have plastic in those days, so um, they must, yeah, I've got to think about this a bit. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, it's, it's actually very helpful having the whole team of people there telling me what to do. I'm going to leave my reference images up there now. Okay, um, uh, good to see the live stream is working for you. Thank you very much. Uh, just, just Chris. <laughs> Uh, got to go for now. Uh, got to get my daughter and myself on the move. Catch you later. See you later, Just Chris. Um, what program is that for the reference image? It's called Pure Ref, uh, and it's really useful. It's a free program. <laughs> Pretty much everything I use is free. Although I do use Photoshop, um, but yeah, um, that's the only thing I use that isn't. Uh, how to use Auto Mirror? I can't use it in Blender 2.81. That's interesting. Uh, I don't find it a problem. Um, I mean, I'm using it. Um, in the exercises I do. Have you tried the exercises to see whether, because I, I describe it a bit more, um, so maybe um, look at those exercises to help. I think what's missing from uh, that gold is a bit of texture, so I'm gonna use a texture brush in a moment for that. Uh, gold seams on the side pockets would work nicely, yep. Um, you can't find it. Um, oh, um, this, because it's a plugin, so edit preferences. Um, a, a plugin, not um, an add-on, not a plugin. My rep, um, oh, it's gone off the other screen, and it's going to over my pure. Hate this when this happens. And now that's going weird. Oh, it's all going weird. I think I've killed it. I've got to minimise my ah. Whew, a little bit worried there. Thought I'd thought I'd died. Is the stream going okay? Have we seen any glitches? Everybody all right? Um, add-ons and then auto. Auto. Auto mirror, there it is, I've got it ticked, so tick it, and then it will appear down under the edit menu, auto mirror. Okay. Um, right, so let's carry on a little bit. Don't forget the side pocket buttons. Yes, I will paint those on. In fact, I suppose I'd better paint those on now. Um, I've got my gold, got my gold. Sample there, and bigger brush. Button around there, I think. Buttons are nice and easy to paint. Uh, so, although, is it looking all right in there? That's it's quite good having this, I suppose, isn't it, for the camera? Then I don't keep zooming out. Um, those are obvious things that I often just don't do out of habit. Okay, so a button. Nice, easy way to do a button. Uh, no problem, uh, Francie, hooray. <laughs> uh, so button, if I go screen now and think, right, the top is going to be hit by the light. Now uh, the uh, multiply so for dark. I'm not really even changing the colors here, but I suppose I could go to across the blue a bit here, uh, a bit darker though. And uh, a little bit around here, probably just bring that down just a touch. I'm going to alt middle click, and zoom in on that section. And there we go. And bring this right down because I don't want to make it too dark, but just around the bottom there. And if we want a really shiny button, we can use, well, we could use white, basically. 
You've got to be a little bit careful using white. I've got a low brush, mix brush down. Ta-da, button. The only thing about this button is it looks weird when you move around, but it's static, so it looks all right here, doesn't it? Um, I would say that, now let's look at my reference images again. Let's have another quick look and see if there's any buttons on these. Bringing those across. Any buttons? There are some there, but they're not particularly good ones. I want to find there. That's not helping. Oh, maybe. Can you see that sort of, there is a bit of, and that's, I don't think that's just ambient occlusion. It's where the wear isn't hitting this. So it's hitting this area more and brushing up the leather more, but the leather goes more shiny where the button meets the leather. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind. So we might have a bit of a darker color. Let's have a look if we can see that anywhere in here as well. No, no buttons anyway. No, buttons must be out, out of fashion now, aren't they? Ah, there's a button. Can you see uh, the that um, sort of leather colour um, is more in those sort of um, uh, around the buttons and then towards the edges uh, we see lighter colour. So I can really go to town a bit more on some of these scratches and things, which I might do, but you have to be a bit careful it doesn't become too lifelike, otherwise it uses, loses that stylized look. So I don't want to go too far and I don't want to spend too long either because we've already been an hour and a half killer. Okay, um, so I'm going to speed up a bit, hopefully <laughs> I say that. Uh, let's talk about painting metal a little bit. So Alt, left click on this, big buckle right. So um, same principles. So again, I'll just use the screen brushes and I won't add any texture. So I'm just going to uh, low strength, about two, like I say, I'll probably go a little bit lower this time just to uh, make sure that I'm not getting anything too wrong. And just highlighting those bits, maybe a bit on the corner here and the corner here. Okay, so got some highlights there. And metal has quite thin highlights to make it look really shiny. And it will have a lot of color variations as if it's picking up the reflections. That's what I've learned so far anyway. And it's, oh, I just messed up there. Um, but it, it's, it's not easy, uh, metal, it's not easy. Especially if you're hand painting, it just can be really tough. So uh, picking up light from different places so around the metal there and then let's go to multiply and just get those crevices so we're certainly around the back we're going to get a lot um just up a little bit more there hmm not adding why is that not adding hardly anything oh because i'm on white you idiot <laughs> let's go mid gray there we go there see that's making a big difference so the multiply brush obviously is not going to affect it if i'm on white it's going to do nothing because it's trying to use white to multiply something it needs some sort of um, darker tone in order to to work so don't be silly like grant was there uh, so there we go around the bottom here just adding that bit of shading in at the moment and then a bit of shading under here especially now the that bit of the buckle is a separate object so i can go just underneath it like this so i'm just getting the shape at the moment tapping away uh, when you do the gold remember it is shiny so it has some dark colors uh yeah yeah um i haven't decided whether this is gold or not really um but yeah it needs much more dark down here i haven't really done the multiplier of that i'm sort of uh, fleeting around the image a bit too much at the moment i probably need to focus on one so people can understand what i'm my process is and what I'm doing a bit more. Okay, so we've got what looks very plasticky at the moment. Now that, <laughs> this is the issue. And this is what's so hard about metal, is trying to get that shininess. So, um, uh, one, we want some reflections in there. So let's add so something like a red. Oh, I'm still on multiply mix. So it's um, reflecting something, a bit of the brown it's gonna reflect, maybe a bit of this gold as well. So we'll um, get that gold. In fact, I'll just sample the color, won't I? There we go, sample the color. So that's going to reflect a bit of that across the top there. So it's starting to look a tiny bit more metal. We want to reflect that brown as well. So let's sample that. And in here, we want to reflect some of that brown. I might even make that a tiny bit darker. So it's reflecting the, uh, reflecting the brown, but with some sort of darkness as well. Hopefully I'm making a bit of sense here. So we've got a bit of brown in here that it's reflecting. Looking a bit better, slowly getting there. But it does take me a little while with uh, metal, to be honest, um, just to 
I'm just slow with it. Uh, okay, now we need, uh, uh, do we? Yeah, we need a bit of, now, uh, if it was a, a gold um, strap, the metal's the only thing that sort of retains its color in the highlights. Uh, that's uh, that's why you have that metal slide in the principal BSDF. Uh, but this is gray, so we're not, oh, I'm sampling, not um, changing the brush size. Um, so, yeah, you've got to think about that a little bit. So we can go really, let's go quite high. And just in certain areas, so it's picking up that light. Hopefully, it's still not looking plasticky. Ooh. So, really sharp highlights now. It's getting there, it's getting there. It's still not quite there. It needs a bit uh, more darkness in places, and I think a bit more reflections actually. So, I'm going to copy some of these colors. Uh, make some light areas, Ooh, not quite that much, as if there's something to reflect. Uh, maybe there could be some grass as well to reflect, so we'll go some green here. So re reflecting some grass from the floor, I don't know why I'm thinking grass, but there might be some greens in there, and it's just picking up those reflections. Very shiny at the moment, uh, a bit too shiny, but let's get in there with the multiply now. And we'll go across to the purples a bit. Maybe I want to go into the reds a bit because of the reflection. It's difficult to say. Uh, what are people saying anyway? Can you please make your stream tomorrow one hour later? I'm not streaming tomorrow. Uh, very uh, busy tomorrow. Playing football. <laughs> uh, looking forward to that game. Um, we're playing Thurston away. It's miles away as well, so a bit annoyed that I have to travel that far. <laughs> Know why I'm telling you this? Um, I'm sure you're fascinated by my football antics. Okay, so at the moment we've just got the metal in. We haven't got any character to it yet, so scratches and things like that. But it, does it look like shiny metal? It's pretty much there. It's not quite there. Do I need to have a few more highlights? What do you reckon? A few more highlights? Um, just checking that we're all good. Any questions? Uh, need some highlights in the middle of the strap. Yeah, yeah, I will do. I'll, I'll get to the strap in a bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> good luck. Hope you win. Uh, yeah, yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> you need sharper highlights. I think they're, sh they're quite, they're sharp enough. I think I need bigger highlights, actually. Uh, well, look at this one here. There's a good reference image for some I mean, it's obviously blurred, but that's kind of the bit we're doing at the moment. So I'm, I'm thinking, because it's fairly sharp there, I'm just going to go fairly, just close to the middle, low screen strength. No, that wasn't right. That was too wide. Yeah, I suppose maybe you mean sharp uh, highlights like this. I mean, it is sharp in a sense, but really sharp highlights is there. Like that. Yep, so um, do you, I think you meant more of the sharper highlights, perhaps that was what you meant, because that's working quite well there, isn't it? Like that. There you go. That is working a bit better. Any more good advice? <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to get some a bit more around here. Just bring this down a little bit. There we're looking. That's a bit better, isn't it? So you mean those brighter um, highlights. Please sub to my channel. It's Interpixel again. You're back. Okay, you're allowed that one. I'll give it to you. <laughs> uh, so yesterday, uh, this will be an icon. You said it would be an icon for Atlas Empires. Could you explain me um, how a 3D model can be turned into an icon? Uh, so it's purely, uh, it will take this render and it will be put in as an icon like that. Uh, there's nothing special about it. It's just if you've got a 3D model, one, they want to keep the style that I'm using, so they want it to be like all the models that I've got in the game already. Uh, but two, they can say, actually, can we have it there and there or there and there? So they can just change their minds in terms of the angle. Uh, that's all the thing is. Um, uh, the transition from the strap to the covering looks blocky. Uh, this bit here, yep. Yeah, I was just thinking that myself, actually. Uh, 
What is it for Sculpt January today? I don't know what it is actually. Anybody know what it is today? <laughs> have you tried using Substance Painter for texture painting? No, I haven't. I would like to have a go, but I haven't had the time to really look into it yet. Um, let's just see if there's any other ones. Uh, I still got a lot to learn about Blender. I can see that now. Uh, I can see that now, though. <laughs> cool, Osiris there. Yep. Um, thanks for joining me, everybody. This is this good fun. I really am enjoying. Uh, it's great to have people to chat to whilst doing this. Usually, I listen to a podcast. Uh, I like Radio Four podcasts, especially. So I listen to Beyond Today, <laughs> and it's just current affairs, interesting things, fascinating stuff. Um, okay, let's uh, get back onto the bag quickly. Because, yeah, like people are saying, did I click on the bag there? Multiply, it's quite low, I suppose. There we go, it is working. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to check and completely ruin your work. Uh, bring that down. So let's go to a cooler color, around the blues. Yeah, it's sort of coming out in some places, not others. I suppose that's sometimes why it's easier to actually just use a color. So this should blend in a bit more. It might be going a bit too dark. I better just zoom out. No, it's all right in there. I mean, I haven't got much um, contrast at the moment, contrast being sort of the light and dark bits. So I think it's okay to add in a bit extra. Oh, I wasn't looking there though, was I? There we go. Let's get it in there. You can isolate objects as well uh, with forward slash and your numpad. I did mention that yesterday, but might have a different crowd today. Uh, who wasn't here yesterday then? <laughs> uh, so I need to see if I need to sort of re-explain things or whether most people know what I'm talking about. Just down there a bit as well. Uh, Substance Painter has very bad lighting. That's interesting. Didn't know that. Uh, it should just use an HDRI, but I suppose it hasn't got quite the same things uh, going on as perhaps Eevee has. But I'm just filling in a few more of these... Um, creases and things now. Uh, I'll probably do a little bit more shading from the bottom here as well. Been a bit rough with this over this side, but that's okay I think. All right, let's bring back the other objects and see how we're looking. Probably a little bit dark under here. I think that's probably going to be okay, but you do need to sort of tidy up your lines occasionally, so you can go rid of the quite deep multiply brush and get that line for different areas, so where they meet. I got a bit lost then, so I sort of ignored everybody. But um, that's not great. I'm going to undo that actually. That easy to just undo. Brush a little bit bigger. So I was kind of testing it out on that other side, make sure I had the brush right before coming to this side and doing a bit of a smoother job. <laughs> so where that brush is hitting this sort of strap thing here. Okay, how are we looking? So again, looking over here really, aren't we? And see what's going on. Okay, just uh, checking everything's okay. Infinite Monkey Cage is good. Uh, yeah, there's some really good stuff on Radio 4. Uh, actually, I'm saying that, but people can't get it actually in different countries, so I feel bad for saying that now. Um, it is Old Man Radio. Yeah, indeed. I, and I quite like it. <laughs> I know, it's shocking. Um, it's, uh, I must be getting to that age. I'm going to a bit more detail in here as well. should probably be a bit more precise zoom in a little bit that's the great thing about digital work we can zoom in and we've got an undo um, I did used to do sort of traditional media when I was doing a levels and things uh, but they I prefer doing this much prefer doing this actually because um, it's just a much bigger safety net isn't it and things go wrong there we go it's, it's looking a very soft leather at the moment so um, we need a bit more detail. This needs a bit of work as well. It still looks a bit blobby, doesn't it? Uh, they, it looks still a tiny bit plasticky as well. It's quite hard to get that bang on and right. Let's um, add a bit of character to it. So, um, I mean, maybe a, I suppose character elements, I've got to be a bit careful. I might be going a bit too soon. So I'm just going to come across here as well. I 
I haven't done much with that side at all. All right, and let's let's start um, messing with the leather a bit more now. So um, I'm going to get a bit of this yellow here, and I'm going to change the brush. Let's do this. So texture mask. So I want a sort of noisy brush for these rough bits around the edge. And remember the reference images? So I'll just quickly click on those, bring those across again. So especially, where was it? Uh, so here, rough around the edges. It's quite hard leather, that, but then here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Uh, around the edges there, around this strap, look at that. That's what I'm going for, a little bit of that. Uh, but again, it is stylized, so I don't want to go overboard with that, um, but um, I want that in the back of my mind. So, uh, nice light brush. Uh, so we've got the texture mask. What I do, um, in fact, I'll do it without the way I usually do it for explanation. Uh, did you go to school for this or develop a more artistic eye over time? Uh, this is all over time, really. I mean, I did do um, A-level art, which is sixth form as we have it. So GCSEs for us is normal high school. And then we have sixth form afterwards. So I did A-level art and GCSE art as well. But everything else was um, in my own time, as it were. So we add a new brush in the texture mask. So new brush. And uh, it, it's better to have this brush as random. So random brush. Nothing's there at the moment, so uh, nothing should happen. Yep, that's good. Nothing's happening. So if I go down to here to the texture, though, uh, and add a um, and go to that brush that I've added, so brush mask texture there, there's my brush, and now I can add a noise texture. Okay, so where it says type noise, now when I brush, it's got some noise. Okay. And actually, I've noticed the text, the, some of the leather does have sort of dark bits in it like that. So I'm going to leave that there for a second and see if that works. So back to, so there's, so I'm going between that texture and the brush. So that's why I usually have an extra one out here with my texture on. Um, so we can see it, but it's getting a little bit crowded. Isn't it? Are we all good? Are we all okay? <clears throat> what do I model when I don't know what to model? Uh, Pinterest, go on to Pinterest and look at what other people have done. ArtStation, look what other people have done and just have some fun. Um, mimic what people are doing uh, and uh, try and enjoy that sort of aspect of it uh, learn from what they're doing their mistakes not their mistakes uh, make mistakes um, practicing what they're doing is what I'm trying to say uh, and it's not really coming across um, and um, yeah eventually then you'll get your own ideas based on what you've been doing and learning hopefully that helps so there we go, the sort of edge of the leather. Can you see that's looking kind of cool? Good, good bit of fun there. Especially, it needs to be especially in those sort of places, doesn't it? Where it's going to really sort of um, get rough. Get rough, if that makes any sense. I do want some scratches. I'm sort of thinking of a sort of seam down here. Would that make sense? I think it would. I mean, it hasn't got a seam down there in the reference images, but I feel like it needs a bit of a seam down here. I'm going to make it a bit wobbly. Can you see I'm wobbling my brush from side to side slightly like that. And we want to see that very edge there. That's going to have a bit as well. Oh, that's good fun, isn't it? And then a harder line. So at any point I want to turn them off my texture mask. I come down here and just turn it off. So close it down. And there's, in fact, I'm going to move that that's the mask, so that's not there. Texture mask, you can grab here and move it up. So, I mean, it was pretty high anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. But we can see it easily now. So if I want to bring it back, it's there. Okay, so turn it off, that cross. So uh, we need a bit of a multiply brush there as well. Multiply brush. Uh, remember to at me if you've got a specific question to me. Uh, um, because I'm sort of trying to move a little bit faster along here, really. So it'd be nice to get it completed, but it doesn't look like I will, actually. That's quite a thin line, that. I'm going to bring down my strength and make it just a bit bigger. So as if it curves into that. Is that working? I hope that's working. It's looking all right, I suppose. It's not working as well as I'd hoped. I'm just going to add a bit of shading in here for the straps and things. I'm going to try and speed up a tiny bit. I've just said that, I know. But um, I'm going to speed up a bit more than I am. Uh, across to the blues. 
Just adding a bit of shading in now. Okay, so we're getting there. It's looking kind of cool. Yeah, it's working. I'm going to go with the, multi, um, the screen and just give it um, some warmer tones over here. Might be too much, but uh, it's just, sometimes I think, oh, it's too much. And then I look across and think, actually, that's that's okay. Sometimes you can go uh, fairly far and um, I over worry about these things sometimes. And it's easily done, isn't it, when you've got these um, paintings and stuff that you're... Um, you know, you keep working on you. You've got to be careful. <laughs> uh, do you have an H, uh, a good uh, starry HDRI? No, I don't. <laughs> HDRI Haven, Haven, though, they've got some good stuff. It's it's difficult because how do you take an HDRI at night? It's, it's very difficult. You need a good camera. Why are you so likable? Ah, well, that's just my gorgeous personality. Personality. Uh, it's I don't know. It's because I prattle around, probably. <laughs> don't take myself too seriously. Um, you can always look at your older models if they if you don't know what to do. I was sort of into to improve them, is that the thinking? I appreciate your tu tutorials. Um, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, Vacant Pixels. Um, appreciate your tutorials. I'm new to Blender. I have a hard time managing multiple assets in a scene. We'd love to see a tutorial managing many models and organizing the files. The great thing is now we've got collections. So looking up collections and how to use those is gonna be very helpful. I still feel like they can go a stage further because I find Unity is quite good for the way it uh, uses collections. I find it a bit better. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, where are your straps to carry out with? Oh, it's a carry, yeah. Um, they're at the back, you can't see them. <laughs> Little wolf. Uh, yeah, so uh, some backpacks are the, the yeah. It, um, it should have a strap at the top there, really, shouldn't it? But uh, I'm not too worried about that. Um, the straps need bigger contrast. Yeah, I was thinking that just look, looking down there now. Uh, blending too much with the bag, yep. Try making the strap shadow on the bag a bit darker. Yeah, <laughs> um, yep, so I'm still on the bag, aren't I? So I'm going to do that now. I would agree. I'm just lightly brushing still. So I don't want to go too far. Um, but I will actually, because the straps, the leather will wear more on the straps, won't it? So this leather is going to be that tiny bit sort of dark. I'm going to move around a bit in the color as well. Might have gone a bit too far there. I'm probably too saturated. Yeah, not too bright. There you go. Bit in the colors. I might have just messed it up slightly, but that's all right. That's the thing is you, you can't worry too much. Uh, about messing it up and doing the wrong thing because you've got to experiment and improve uh, and you can always just um, borrow the colors from different places. I think we're getting there with the straps but what the straps need is that highlight down the edge there. So I'm going to go across the straps now, alt left click, oh, alt left click, strap right and let's bring back our mask, there's our noise mask and I think it was this one wasn't it? I uh, probably want to go a little bit more saturated and not the multiplier, the mix, a bit more there. So now we can, the only thing is when you're drawing from the side there like that, can you see it spread across my object? So I'll undo that and I'll alt left click. So I zoom into that. So my camera is rotated around there. Go down the edge there, a bit more carefully. Oh, there we go. All right. And it's going to be particularly worn on the edges around here, isn't it? I say, isn't it? Rhetorical questions. You all agree with me, don't you? <laughs> okay, we're looking all right. I'm going to put a tiny bit in here as well as the highlight. Okay, so it's popping out a bit more. I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of multiply in there as well. Give it that sort of texture. There we go. So they're popping out a bit more. Need to do the other one now. Alt left click, strap left. And what's a good way to learn get into Blender as a newbie? I've just, I was just answering that earlier actually. Interesting that two people have asked that now. Um, so I would say um, beginner tutorials, uh, uh, courses like uh, my um, uh, uh, the C Shack things a little bit later, but the monster and the uh, character. Uh, so look for the playlists on my channel. That's the best way. Um, they're definitely the best way out of any way to learn Blender is to look on my channel. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but also, I was saying that there are some really good paid-for courses. I've got a link to Zacharias Reinhardt's course for, from CG Boost, it's called. So CG Boost course. That's in the description as well. It's an affiliated link, so you'll be supporting me, like I keep saying. Um, but it's a really good course. Yeah, really, really good. Uh, so that it's, it covers even things like particle systems and uh, lighting. Um, so it goes uh, way beyond what I um, offer with mine a lot of the time. So that's really great. So I would strongly recommend that. I uh, hope that helps. Uh, toxic. <laughs> um, the upper part looks like the treasure chest. Probably does a bit, doesn't it? Um, I'll put a few more character elements and hopefully that will help make it look more like leather in a second. Uh, more shadow under the straps to help them pop out. Uh, yep, I'm still working on that, but I will do even more. I followed your metaboard hand sculpt tutorial, but when I went into Vertex Paint to colour it, the paint went all glitchy. Do you know, I, I'm still not getting to grips with Vertex Paint at all. Uh, it's a bit weird. Um, maybe it's a 2.81 thing, I don't know. Uh, but I've found it a bit, a bit odd recently. Um, so I've not enjoyed Vertex Paint. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll, I'll look into that. But I don't generally uh, use Vertex Paint much. Uh, I tend to be more about unwrapping it and uh, painting like this. Even with sculpted models and realistic models, I like to paint like this. Um, just gives you that more control, I feel, anyway. Just to add a bit of variation, some in here now as well. Oh, I'm using mix. I was thinking, this is weird. It's reacting weirdly, this brush. <laughs> that will be why. <laughs> okay, so... Not that it looks bad with mix, does it? But um, it wasn't doing what I was expecting it to do. I was expecting it to go lighter and it was going more sort of orangey. Kind of looks all right, though. All right, we're sort of getting there. So they are standing out a bit more, but they still need a bit more... Um, ambient occlusion, I think, yep, to stand out, as people keep telling me. Um, I feel like I can do that with this sort of whiteness here, like that. It's what I don't want to go too far, because it's it's a bit far away, and it, I don't want to give it the impression that it's sitting on the bag. I might change the angle slightly to there. Um, yep, yeah, hopefully that's making sense. Um, I keep trying to render my animation in Blender, but it crashes suddenly. What's the best render farm? I don't, I've, do you know, I've never used a render farm, uh, so I don't actually know. Uh, I've never had a big enough project quite well. Um, just, I probably have, but I've never actually used one. I'm just uh, lazy. But um, you could try, have you got a graphics tablet is the, um, have you got a graphics card, sorry, is my first question. If you're using the graphics card, you might have the, um, you know, under the, under the performance, you might have your, uh, what are they called, the box size. There's a certain name for them. You might have that bit too high. That often causes CUDA errors, C-U-D-A errors. Yeah, that can be a problem. Uh, thank you. I'll look into that method. Cool. Uh, is it my screen or is it the paint grainy? Yes, it is grainy for a reason. Uh, so I've got a noise brush on. <laughs> it's just your screen. <laughs> Uh, yep, and I'm doing that on purpose because I like that sort of soft leather look. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get anyway. I'm going to dab a few bits of this soft leather around the place with some different colours now. Uh, we're, I'm going to go for a multiply now. Just mixing it up a bit. Mix it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more strength. I'm, ah, stupid idiot. And back onto the bag now. There we go. I was thinking it's not having a lot of effect, this. There we go. Just a bit of variation around here it's getting there isn't it uh how are we for time oh that is has been the two hours i'm gonna go a little bit longer i'm, I'm doing it i'm doing it uh how's everybody doing 182 still so uh people are still happy with the stream hopefully i'm using that as my gauge whether people are right with what i'm doing and teaching um i don't really like using the smear brush once i've used the texture brush because you can t see it's taken that away but um i'd still want to just tidy a few things up, as you can see there. So it's a very soft leather bag, uh, which is what I was thinking of. Okay, uh, now it looks like one grant, but a few little stitches. Oh yeah, uh, stitches. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe stitch down here as if this going underneath and a stitch down here, stitch down at the top here. 
And do, I mean, I've, I've made this all one leather bit, but does that need some sort, I mean, maybe stitching down here might look cool. So let's have a go there. Uh, I'm just thinking with the stitching, going for quite a dark uh, brown, um, uh, the um, texture brush all the way up, mix this is, so mix. Uh, no, I wasn't going to add that golden seam to the bottom of the bag. I didn't. Uh, we tried it earlier with the modelling and it didn't work. I'll see you later, Interpixel. Uh, Got to go, Creeping Talon. So lots of people <laughs> chiming out. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, um, thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, we tried it with the yellow at the bottom. It didn't really work. Um, I'll do a few char character elements now with the... Um, uh, so I've got a very dark brush, high strength, using the mix. And what you can do, you can do the... Um, I'll turn my texture off there so I'm pressing the cross and turning that off but I'm just going to do it by eye let's I'm just going to get my reference image as well make sure I know what stitches look like I know that sounds silly obviously um, I know roughly what stitches look like but they they're kind of unusual I mean in this case some of them are light actually so maybe I'm hmm actually I thought I knew <laughs> hmm I might be going a bit too realistic I could do some sort of stylized stitching uh, let's just have a quick look. I'll try a couple of ways. So I'm thinking really dark and then um, something like that. So I need to go further with the brush. Right, so like that, like that. So nice and big brushes. That's not even though. That was dreadful. So always look at the one before and see how long you need to make it. The stitches are fairly organic anyway, aren't they? But we're pretty much there. Okay, so we've got sort of big fat stitches there. It might not work, but then um, I've noticed that lots of them have a sort of, then a lighter color that they use. They have a natural sort of light stitch like this. So I'm just gonna see what that looks like. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Yep, that was pretty simple as well. So this sort of dark color is um, where the leather uh, sort of, uh, keeps its color. I'm trying to know, am I making sense there? I think that's kind of all right really. I just need the screen brush uh, to lighten that up a little bit at the top, just there. And the multiply brush just in the crevices. I think my brush is a bit too light though. I mean I, I might go blue just to, at the bottom here. Uh, need to go a lot darker really. Um, I mean, um, less strength. <laughs> Hopefully I'm making sense here. Um, I'm good, thank you, Louis Janus. Uh, you're missing uh, that little metal parka. Not sure what that means. <laughs> uh, are you not adding the golden scene to the bottom? Oh, we've already said that, haven't we? Um, oh, the, lo uh, the logo thing. Um, there. Uh, I, yeah, I'll probably add that later. Later in. So just uh, making these a tiny bit darker. The other one's maybe the top there. Hitting from the strap, so that's some stitching. I'm trying to get the stylized look, so um, the stitching may not look as you're expecting there, but I've, I'm going to make them all a bit darker. So I'm just going across with my multiply brush to bring it down. Yeah, it's kind of fun, I think. I need stitching on the other side though as well. So look at the size. Let's. Um, I'll sample this color. So it's yeah, it should be the same. Bring it all into one and across the mix. And I'll do one stroke. That's about the right size, good. I'm just quickly looking across at the other side each time. I think I went a bit wide there. So my brush is um, zoomed out a bit more. Just keep making sure it lines up and makes sense. Cool, that looks all right, I think. I'm gonna sample that. Did I hit it? That's the only thing, you see, you don't quite hit it, you don't get it <laughs> with the pipette that is too big. I think this maybe isn't yellow enough, but we'll see. There we go. I mean, they're in the background, so you can't see them much anyway, so um, I know I've got lots to do, so I'm gonna just sort of move on. Um, uh, maybe a few wrinkles here and there. That's the next character element I want to do. I'm just sort of thinking whether I need any more stitching. 
Let's see, we go. Right. Uh, it's 10.30 p.m. in India. What's the time in your country? We are fi- just gone five. Um, I wonder if you can have layers in Blender like in GIMP. Yes, you can. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. I mean, the stitching would have been better on a new layer, I suppose. Yes. Um, uh, thanks, Scott C. Great to see your workflow in real time, he's saying. Uh, my keyboard, sorry. I mean, little metal parts. Uh, do you mean like the buckle? Um, so we got the buckles and the um, this. What's that called? <laughs> My brain's just gone. I think I must be getting tired. I've been doing this too long. So I usually have a few breaks in between. Um, uh, button. Did I say button? I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, so buckles and buttons. Uh, so those are the metal parts. We're still unsure what this thing is. It's sort of like some weird uh, plasticky, shiny bit. I don't know. Let's get some character elements in there. Do you think the st- side pockets need the stitching? I mean, they could be sort of fat pockets, or do they need stitching down the side? I'll consider that in a second. Uh, could I have a quick look at the wireframe? Yep, there you go. These uh, these would normally be cut off. I would cut the scrolls off uh, normally uh, if it were going into game. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, I feel like I need to go a bit darker up here as well. Um, could I have, oh, sorry, so seen that, uh, uh, Disc, Discord is in the um, description, should be. Uh, right, I'm just going to move on with the bag, uh, multiply. So it's sticking out there, and then we're going to go for a bit of, I'll just sample this yellow, get the screen get my texture back and then as if that's the very top of the bag there. Mm, that doesn't look great actually to be honest. I'm gonna get the multiply brush back there, bring that down. And get sort of more bluey sort of colour. And just there we go. A bit better. I feel like we need a bit more in here as well. Got this fairly high now, so I'm doing a bit more detailing um, before moving on to the very sort of fine character details, which I'll do in a bit. Yep, that's helping. Maybe just a um, a little bit less there, just to feel like this pocket needs to sort of stand out a bit more around here. Yeah, we're getting there in these crevices around here. I feel like this probably needs a bit of texture as well. It looks a bit too shiny, doesn't it? I know and it is following the, the concept art fairly well. It's just this uh, emblem. I'm, I'm thinking that's going to take me a little while and um, I haven't got much time left. <laughs> just seeing what people are saying as well. Uh, the metal things, I think they mean the buckle pins. Oh, those, ah, oh, yeah, do you know, I haven't been on those at all, have I? I wasn't really noticing, but yeah, they're really, they're, I haven't touched them, have I? <laughs> alt, left click, alt, left click, try that again, and buckle small, I suppose to say right, I think. Okay, so let's um, come right in here, alt, left click to, alt, middle click, excuse me, to zoom in on it, and I think actually that object needs to... Um, come out just to touch G, then Y. And I'm just going to move it up in the Z as well. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> My um, tablet just died. <laughs> Not sure why it's done that. I'll turn it back on again. Was it overheating? Uh, am I still... I'm still live, so that's okay. Uh, so hopefully it will just come back online in a second. I'm just going to unplug it. It's a, it's a mobile studio pro, so it's not like a Cintiq. So, which is it's quite rare that it does that, but it has done that before. Um, hold on, I'm just uh, unplugging it, plug it back in, make sure my plug's all in, and try and restart. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> it's all black, yeah, but it's restarting, so it should plug in in a second, and we should be okay to go. But I think Blender's probably jumped to another screen. Uh, <laughs> you still see my face, though. Uh, that's the main thing, isn't it? Hey! <laughs> Right. No panic, though. There's no panic to be had. We are almost there. 
Oh, I think it was a weird update. It just did a weird update. So there was some weird update happening. I've probably got auto update on still. Really shouldn't do that. It's like the worst case scenario, isn't it? Uh, anyway, any questions? Uh, did it save? It, it's all right. Yeah, I, do, I will save the texture actually. Oh man, I haven't saved the texture, am I? Uh, you can hear it coming back in. Let's save that texture and save the file just to be sure. Um, <laughs> that could have been really bad, I suppose, couldn't it? I could have lost all like two hours work because I have forgotten to save bad, bad. Okay, um, I think uh, we're all back to square one again, aren't we? Let me know if there's any other issues. <laughs> I love how people just put F, F. Now, is that the swear word or is that like fail? <laughs> anyway, but it wasn't a blender crash. That was a Wacom crash. So, um, your face has crashed too. How dare you unleash 75. <laughs> okay. Uh Oh, uh, so I was moving this and then it all went haywire. So grabbing the Z, let's move that back down there. I think we're okay, aren't we? Mm. Just sort of moving that so it's in a good position. Okay, so just quickly, let's do some texture painting on this one. Let's get rid of our, uh, whatever that's called, our brush. Um. <laughs> Gonzola T. <tea>. Uh, <laughs> Do you think anime girls are promoting unreal standards for women asking for a friend? <laughs> uh, if all women are supposed to have really high-pitched screamy voices. Um, I don't really think so. I think they're so cartoonish. Well, it depends what sort of anime girls. Um, I suppose, yeah, with the really thin waist and the uh, big, um, you know, eyes. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, I suppose it is. Um, it's the same pressure that we've always been put under, or always put women under, which is the sort of objectification. Uh, so yes, I think it is pretty bad. Um, it, it's it's been like that for a while now, though, hasn't it, with magazines and Photoshop? Um, I, I'm not sure what the answer is because I don't think we're ever going to lose it. And actually, when I'm painting uh, female characters and stuff, uh, I give them big eyes quite often. And um, uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, is this looking okay? I think it's looking all right, isn't it? Uh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, in media theory, that's called, uh, generally it's sort of looked upon as the male gaze, how um, all media is from the eyes of a man, uh, because you generally get male cameramen, uh, male producers, uh, male writers, and so forth. Uh, so we've all got this sort of um, masculine way of looking at cinema, hence a lot of the women in cinema are portrayed as objects. But I think that's also just society as well, that... Um, uh, because I don't mean to be rude, but women kind of do that to themselves. It's not their their, their fault, but um, that's uh, men are more visual, aren't they? And um, why am I going off on this one? <laughs> and um, uh, women, um, it's more about uh, uh, the, uh, the man making them um, feel safe, and uh, they like to be desired, whereas we desire them. So uh, you're always going to look at um, women in that way. I, uh, how did you get me onto this subject? <laughs> um, are you to do the weekly contest anytime soon? Um, so there's weekly contests on the Discord. Uh, JB Blender does those. Um, I'm not really involved in that because I just can't quite spare the time. Uh, but um, the main competition, I say the main competition, the monthly competition, I do that one. And that will be next week, I think, is the deadline for that. So just adding a bit to the buckle here. Now they are looking met metallic, aren't they? Looking a bit brushed metal, so I could go a bit shinier. And in order to do that, I probably need to go darker in places, uh, a bit more shadows and stronger highlights. Um, uh, kind of new here. Uh, what's that? I downloaded all your vids. How do you trans transfer all those assets to Unity while keeping the painting and shaders. Uh, well, uh, that's fairly straightforward because the um, I'm just going to save this image. Save. Um, my oh yes, uh, my texture went a bit weird then, but that's all right. It's on the other screen. Uh, so you um, join it all together. Export as an FBX. In fact, you don't actually have to join it select all together. You just select all uh, file export obj fbx fbx is slightly better because it will keep the separate parts if you want to keep them uh bring it into unity then add that to your albedo and it's there 
uh, make sure it's got no shininess. So uh, in uh, Unity, you bring it's the smoothness down, I think, isn't it? I bring the specular down as well, and it gives it this nice soft look. Now, we still are viewing this from the point of view of the HDRI, and I've forgotten to say, but often I press Control shift left click on this, and that will make it so there's no shadows. Can you see the shadows there? Uh, without shadows, with shadows. So that's actually what it should look like, uh, but uh, that gives it a bit of shadow from the HDRI. Um, so that's with a viewer node, and you can get there with the node wrangler. It's basically an emission, an emission with a strength of one. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, sorry, are there any other questions? Um, Critter, Critter, is it good? Yes, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, oh, please, Grant, don't get into that objectification stuff. <laughs> please don't. Uh, why do you think Brad Pitt is a star? It's the same for men too. It's not as bad for men though, because uh, women uh, look at uh, uh, the power of a man and they attracted that. It is, it, in many ways, it is the same for men. But uh, women are objectified in magazines a lot more. Um, the really good video for that. It's um, a little condescending in places, but um, it's called Killing Me Softly. And you can see it on YouTube. It's, uh, I think that sort of sums it up. This woman goes around sort of gathering magazine articles and how women are even sort of represented as objects and things. As a media study teacher, I look at it all the time. Uh, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating to sort of get into the psyche. But obviously as males, we don't want to admit that we objectify women. Uh, because it makes us feel bad, but uh, maybe it's it's a, such a bad thing in, in some ways. I, it just questions. I'm not. Um, I, I haven't made my mind up on a lot of these things. It's really um, hard to know because sometimes you sort of. Um, I'm not. Get, I, I'll just stop there, shall I? I'll just stop there. Uh, really love your vids. Uh, glad I discovered you. Thank you very much. I'm probably going to lose subscribers now because I've just been going on about objectifying women and stuff. <laughs> going to annoy people. Uh, hello from Kazakhstan. Cool. Uh, I can't pronounce your name, but I would uh, say hello properly. <laughs> uh, but I've liked the hot brushes uh, feel. I'm not sure what you mean there, Soul Skinner. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 we're going into the, the male gaze and the female gaze. Often women look at other women in an um, objectification way as well. And it, it, the argument is, is that the fault of the media or is that just women comparing themselves to that woman? It's fascinating, isn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, male gaze is BS if it doesn't mention female gaze in the same breath. Uh, yeah, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, I do like discussing it, but I'm a little bit nervous of discussing it online as well, uh, which I shouldn't be really, but there is a whole sort of PC thing which you sort of have to be a bit aware of uh, as a media studies teacher, I'd rather openly discuss it um, and discuss everybody's opinion. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not thinking. Alt uh, left click. Oh no! I'm, uh, what am I doing? Oh, middle click. I'm going to get to this buckle here and do these buckles a bit. Um, yeah, I'd rather sort of uh, talk about it uh, and discuss it because oh, it's so fascinating. Uh, it really is. Um, why um, we are how we are. I like psychology as well. Absolutely love it. Um, just uh, adding a bit of shading in now. It's uh, really going off topic, but um, uh, tell me if you mind. Uh, <laughs> this went off topic. It really did. Uh, uh, like I like to live dangerously too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, it's a really fascinating one, isn't it? I think um, I better stop talking, really, and I. I better stop talking. Uh, I. But I like I like to discuss things. That's what I'm saying. I like to discuss things openly and find out what people's opinions are. I I'm interested because I'm not a big Trump fan, for example. But um, one of my admin team is a fan of Trump, and I'm interested in his opinions. I want to know um, what he's thinking and why um, uh, he's a fan of Trump. You know, and and what it is about him that uh, you know attracts him to his policies and so forth. And thinking, right, let's just have a look at that. That's a bit better, isn't it? We've got a bit more depth. They look a bit cooler, I think. Oh, I'm getting happy with this. I do want to add a bit more character elements before we finish. And I, I'm stopping talking about the deep stuff. This, I tell you this, um, I, I'm well into the deep stuff. Uh, if um, I, I could talk for hours and discuss for hours on these sort of things. And me and my friends, um, we often do. It's a... I, it's just so interesting. There's so many intricacies to life and uh, who we are. Uh, oh, yeah. 
could go on for ages. Anyway, uh, I think the younger generation of men objectify women less than previous generations. That's really interesting, Nate. I think you possibly could be right there, actually. I think uh, we've grown up as a society uh, because uh, what the problem that came with that objectification and uh, making women into objects in magazines and stuff like that and just sex sells, all that sort of stuff, the problem with that was that it spilled over into life and men behaved badly because of it. Um, but, um, yeah, <laughs> I can't. I'll keep going back to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grant's starting his own podcast live on stream because uh, he used to the radio podcasts. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, watching Beyond Today and things like that. That's uh, you've got to. You should listen to Beyond Today. It's fantastic if you can get radio for where you are. It's, it talks about this thing in much more depth, and it has some research to back it up as well. Which I'm not using any research. I'm just pulling my ignorance. So um, take what I say with a pinch of salt. Did I just grab the strap then? Uh, strap right, yeah. So we're on the multiply brush. I'm just sort of filling in some some holes now. Have I got my texture mask on? No, I haven't. But I suppose the multiply brush is pretty low. Let's get it in there. I should go to a blue, really. Give it a bit more colour in there. Ooh, there we go. All right, just uh, seeing what we're looking like in our image there. I'm going to zoom into this a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if girls objectify guys, then why am I still single? <laughs> I love it. Uh, no, we've really got this going, haven't we? <laughs> um, I think uh, my stream is probably going to be male-dominated. So uh, I think um, so, uh, the opinions you're reading, uh, so be careful, people. Uh, we, we shouldn't go too far because um, uh, we don't want to be unfair because women are sort of being misrepresented perhaps by the male-dominant stream that we've got here so let's all be careful anyway the bag looks great grant keep up the good work thanks nicholas let's get back on subject uh if we have grown up how come trump is the president of the usa <laughs> uh, that in itself is a fascinating question as well what does it say about the power of the media uh it, oh, and if you've watched that the the hack the documentary the hack oh that's fascinating stuff and scary stuff too really uh, because we've had it here as well boris johnson is now our prime minister uh, i'm not so happy about it <laughs> i'm going too far and i'm just uh, taking um telling people my political views is not a good idea um but uh hopefully um you can understand that I'm, I'm a very open person. I'm, I'm very um, not it's not so open that I agree with the flat earthers, but I will I will definitely listen to people. I'll even listen to the flat earthers and see, hear what they have to say. Um, you know, are there any flat earthers out there? Any flat earthers? <laughs> I'm actually a real. Uh, I think my problem actually is that I'm a bit of a people pleaser, so I'm always trying to um, make people happy, and that's not always a good thing, really, is it? Because sometimes you just think. Uh, no, uh, that's the wrong opinion. Like a flat earth thing. I, it's really hard. Uh, <laughs> Boris Johnson does look a bit like Trump indeed, yeah. It's a bit scary. Right, I'm going to do some scratches now. I am keeping this... Um, so just faint scratches like this to start off with, see what it looks like. Just going in slight different directions here, there. Um, how's it looking? Uh, so um, light scratches, because that seems to be the theme. Uh, so the leather sort of turns white, uh, white lighter colour. Anyway, that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? I'm going to have to do those over the bag as well. Just get the other strap and um, do that as well. A few on there. I'm not going as detailed on the other strap, but I probably probably should actually. I haven't done the other thing as well. What I might do is be naughty and just copy the other one from one side to the other. Oh, that was awful, wasn't it? That is a problem when you're painting. Look how deep that goes in there. I didn't realise. Wow, that's that's really. That just doesn't look right, does it? So undo those. Uh, but watch out for that, what I just did there. Uh, that can often happen. So you've got to look where you're going with the painting. Oh, that is really tough, actually. It's really in, ingrained in there, isn't it? Uh, anyway, where are we? <laughs> uh, don't forget the other buckle and pin. Yeah, uh, that's. Um, I was thinking that. 
uh, I'm actually going to be a naughty grab this pin object modes oh that's um, alt left click on it uh, buckle small go to object mode shift D to duplicate <laughs> and uh, for the moment alt left click buckle small left uh, go back to object mode I'll just hide it for the moment and let's just try and rotate this into position There we go. It's, I mean, you can turn snapping on for this, but it's in such a weird rotation that I'm not sure it would work so well. Now it's the sharing the UVs, but it's in the background. Can I get away with it? I think I can. I've obviously got to line it up this way a little bit. Um, but just for the sake of time, and I, actually I can go into texture paint mode and just make it a bit darker in here. I've got, have I got multiple no screen on at the moment? Multiply. Get in there. Get in there. Like that. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, Yo, Grant, I'm ahead out. Yep, see you later. Um, so lots of people saying goodbye. Uh, so we're losing a few of you. <laughs> uh, nice to see you all. Thanks for joining me. Um, but uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I hope I didn't go off on one too much with my opinions <laughs> and scare people away. Uh, surely, please say that didn't uh, upset too many people. Um, who doesn't mind me talking about rubbish like that? And who does? Let me know in the comments. He ain't doing a stream tomorrow. No, no stream tomorrow. Uh, it's more a religious thing. Yeah, with Trump. Uh, th there we go. Uh, I personally am unsure about Trump's um, religious views. Uh, I feel like he's... Uh, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I feel like a bit like he's stringing people along and saying what they want to hear with the religion and stuff. Uh, I get the impression he's not actually um, religious, but... That's just my opinion again. And I'm coming out with it all today, aren't we? Hey Grant, love your work. I was wondering if you could perhaps make a tutorial on texture painting tips. I have a fair few on my website. I probably need to... No, actually, yeah, the Beginner's Guide to Texture Painting playlist has quite a few, actually. So you should be right if you uh, follow along with that. Now, I need some buttons in here, don't I? Sort of... Not buttons. What are they? Uh, holes. That's the word. Like this. How's that looking? It's okay for the moment. Is that too dark, actually? I can lighten it up in a second. That'll be all right. Uh, left click. Alt, left click. That's probably a bit better in terms of the lightness. Now, on the very edges of these holes, I'm just spending ages on this, aren't I? Uh, are people getting bored? Are people okay? Um... PC culture, don't know what they mean. Who the manic millennial? Uh, I'm I'm lost a bit. I haven't been looking at the stream for a little while. I would listen to a podcast of Grant talking about his views on political politics and media. Would you? Uh, I'm talking more about the PC culture and this kind of stuff. Do you mean in terms of um, objectifying women? Yeah, I mean in computer games, it's pretty bad, isn't it? Uh, the weird thing is, I can't help but uh, like computer game art and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I feel bad for it. Um, that the fact that I am therefore probably objectifying women myself and therefore encouraging things. Oh, it's really tough, isn't it? It's a tough one. Um, but I don't want to, uh, you know, avoid the issues because the issues are there. I don't want to just sort of say it doesn't exist because it does. But you've got to sort of question your own. I'm going off on one again. You. you uh, <laughs> Stop asking me these questions. <laughs> Why am I watching this instead of learning uh, for my math exam? <laughs> uh, uh, this sparks joy. Maths, not so much. So maths exam, I see. Well, I'll get to your maths exam, Robert. As much as I want you here, it's you, you need your maths exam. If it's important to discuss each other's opinion, uh, discussing sensitive subject is the only way to move forward. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm glad people are with me on this. Uh, I, I hope it's... Uh, we, what the great thing is we've got a lovely community so um, generally speaking people are really understanding of other people's opinions thoughts and perspectives so I hope um, I'm not being uh, unfair or um, annoying by going on about these things and people still enjoy my streams um, I'm, I'm certainly enjoying this so I absolutely love doing this it really is great fun so are those working? Now, they're not quite because we're not seeing the inside a bit there. We'll probably see a bit more. It's a tough one, uh, painting depth, but you've just got to 
think a little bit. I'm using the, the screen brush because I feel like it's a bit too light, uh, dark and it just needs to fade into that darkness a bit more like that. So I think we've got a bit more depth there now. So I'm going to go across to this one. Um, Alt left click, strap left. And let's get in there and fade into it a bit more like this. There we go. And then a bit more lightness around here like this. Oh, yes. It's good fun, this, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the hole should be wider to fit. Ah, yeah, the buckle's well big, isn't it? Oh, you know, I've really messed it up. Thanks. <laughs> then all that detail. Shall I make the buckle smaller? <laughs> I was just, I was distracted by so much stuff going on there. Uh, me talking about idiotic stuff. And, uh, yep, I'm going to have to turn the, this off and get in there. And make them wider like that. Yep, the buckles are, not the buckles, you know, those bits of the buckle are, are much wider, aren't they? Yeah, that makes a bit more sense. I mean, um, holes do sometimes stretch as well, don't they? So. Oh, I'm <laughs> alt left click, strap right. There we go. Usually, all my objects are sort of joined together and things. So. Uh, they're a bit wider now. And now back to the screen brush. And then just a bit in there. Whoa, dear. Hey, they're sort of working now, aren't they? As holes. There we go. That's better. Alt left click, strap left. So I'm sort of calling out what I'm doing. I'm trying to anyway. Uh, how are you doing? It's stylized. Yes. Uh, is uh, is it still looking stylized? Um, or are you sort of reminding me? Because I might be going a bit realistic. Um, and that's a fault I have that I'm sort of look too closely at things. I'm doing the scratches now. Having a bit of fun with those. You need a, a sort of fairly firm brush with the scratches. Uh, right. How are we doing? I haven't done that sort of emblem emblem thing in the middle there. Please could you do a rigid body body simulation tutorial into Pixel? Um, I think uh, the best person is Olav 3D for that. That scratch doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> He's going through that. Um, he does some really good stuff on that. Uh, I'm just going to, with the screen, I feel like these are too dark. So whoop, very faintly around there. There we go, a bit of depth there. Love it. Um, I might not draw the image because I'm, I'm running out of time. When I, I mean, it's like two and a half hours we've been doing, isn't it? Um, why not Critter, especially if the UV are so simple? Uh, yes, but um, I like to be able to see it in 3D. So, um, uh, so let's look down here for a moment. Can you all see that? All right. So let's go to my bag color, and that's what I would be painting on. Uh, and then I'd have to go across the buckle one because that's a separate map. So, yes, I could do. Um, but I think I'd, I'm kind of just used to doing it in here now. Um, so I can understand why people would, though. Uh, let's, where's the, um, where is my, there it is. Zoom into him. Um, uh, using Cinema 4D, I've never used that, actually. It's quite tough, is it, to get the text painting work to work in that, is it? Um, I don't know a lot about it. All right, I'm going to go onto the bag and do some scratches and things a little bit smaller still got the screen on they look too uniform don't they you've got to be a bit careful of that making that sort of uh, uniform scratches do they look okay i'm going to put some dark ones in as well actually Right, let's put some sort of worn bits. So I'm just looking at my references and there's a few sort of worn uh, bits that we can add as well, sort of like this. Just a wibbling, wobbling my brush around like this a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So some worn bits like that, maybe a sort of bigger patch around here. Still got that um, that texture mask on, so uh, do remember that. And I want to give it a tiny bit of depth, so uh, with the screen brush now, I can just sort of get a, give it a touch of depth. Um, so it's sort of like as if it's digging in slightly, very slightly. So some of these areas which might catch the light just there. I think that makes sense anyway. 
Uh, maybe this one down here, just to alpha a tiny bit. Uh, now, I feel like I'm just looking at my reference images a bit more, and we need a, a few harsher lines. There we go. It looks kind of cool, doesn't it? I better get back to my area there. Um, I need some scratches on the buckle as well, but all over the place, really, with this bag. Make my brush a bit smaller. There we go. Uh, how's everybody doing? I'm having loads of fun doing this. <laughs> I've spent way too long on it. Uh, don't worry, Sammy, if you're watching. I won't bill you for all this. <laughs> He's probably happy because I suppose it is advertising the game. Atlas Empires, everybody. <laughs> Atlas Empires. Uh, where are we? Um, very nice wear on that. Yeah, I think that's working, isn't it? I think maybe it's gone a bit too far there. I'm trying to keep it stylized so it's still obviously got... Um, uh, yeah. Have I gone too far with some of these? You've got to be a bit careful. Can you see how that kinks across there? A little bit careful there. I might try and make that go up that way a bit. Yeah, I'm not sure that worked actually. I'll undo those. Just maybe avoid that area there a little bit. I'll say it, and then I was about to paint on it again. <laughs> um, I think it needs a bit more depth in here. I'm probably not going to do that emblem actually because it's just going to take <laughs> wibbly wobbly. Yeah, I know. I do. I say that all the time. Love wibbly wobbly as a term. Uh, stitching on the top round, maybe around here, sort of thing. That might. Yeah, because there is a bit of a blank space there. I'll. I'm going to send it to them and see what they say because uh, they probably don't want me to spend too long on it as well. And if they think it looks good enough as is. Uh, but do I need some stitching in here? Stitching in here, people, because that didn't take me long, did it? So there was stitching down there. Do I need stitching around here? I'm going to put a few scratches on the other part of that texture as well. So around here, Ooh, that, that's not making sense. And some multiply scratches as well. Yep, I think that looks a bit better. And my dog's starting to bark next door because he wants to get out. <laughs> We've got the painter in, so uh, we don't want him running around the painter, so he's locked in next door. <laughs> poor poor doggy. And I haven't let him out for two hours now. Uh, he should be fine, though. He's usually locked in for a bit more than that. It's a nice big room. Uh, anyway, what am I saying? Uh, maybe a logo of the, na the game on the bag. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I think um, I'm reluctant to do anything on that front of the bag at the moment, just from the time. Um, first stream of yours, uh, tuning in. Hello, issue vis visual effects, issues VFX. Sorry, are you going to add crease down the middle of the side pockets? Yeah, that would work, I think. I'm going to quickly do that because I think that's going to work. Uh, what have I got on? I've got the multiply. Can you hear the dog there? <laughs> oh dear. So I'm noticing my reference image. I'm just going to have a quick look because they've got some things like this, I'm sure. Sure, I saw something where it's sort of a double stitching. No, nah, we'll just have one stitch then. So can we see that from where we are? Actually, I'm going to bring that across so it's sort of stitched to the side slightly here so we can see it more easily. So bring that down there, then go to the screen and um, now a bit yellow, but up with the brightness there. So wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly brush marks. Love it. Okay, so we've got that, although it's not really showing up down here. Uh, let's go to the multiply. So it sort of goes into, uh, with a bit of shading, that comes in. And then screen again. And this bit comes, oh, that's too bright though. This bit comes out slightly. Like so. I'm going to add a bit more wear to the bottom of this bag. And maybe a touch here. Come on, I'm really getting into this. I might have to go and sort my dog out in a second. <laughs> What's he doing? Uh, can you hear the barking actually from where you are? He's just barking a little bit every now and again, just going whoop, whoop. Uh, yes, I can hear the dog release the hound. <laughs> I might just, uh, yeah, open the door in a second. I'm just gonna, uh, I'll be back one second. That feels really weird. Uh, um, 
Oh, poor doggy. I'll bring him in so you can say hello. Can you all hear that again? Oh, I'm, I am feeling a bit bad, but I'm feeling a bit weird as well for um, having to go and sort of dog out miss, midstream. Anyway, where are we? Oh, that's the screen brush still. Oops, multiply. I'm getting very distracted now. Uh, hear the doggy. <laughs> Let the dog out. Oh, doggy. Right, I'm going to go and get him in a sec. And just um, adding a bit more. So, um, to finishing up, I think I'm finishing up a bit. I suppose that golden button, I need a bit more gold and I'm going to give it a bit. This is another useful tip, actually. I, you know, I'm going to go and get that dog. Is that all right? <laughs> uh, uh, one second. Back in a moment. <laughs> okay, can you all see my dog? You can't, he's off, he's off camera. <laughs> oh, sneeze at me. Oh dear, I don't know whether you can all see this, but that is my dog. He's a bit excited because it's, uh, I think my wife has just come home or something like that. I don't know whether you can see him there on the screen. Uh, yeah, I'm actually seeing my life. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Okay, you can see him. <laughs> yes, that's a door, that's not a cupboard. <laughs> So yeah, uh, did you did you get to see him? Come on, friend. Come up here. Come on. Come on. He's quite a big dog, but he doesn't mind being lifted up. There we go. Hey. Hello. His name's Frank. And <laughs> do you want to do some painting, Frank? He's he's quite a good artist, actually. He's really good. Anyway, you're going to get down now. There we go. Right, calm down. Oh no, now I've wound him up loads. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, shh, 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 shh. He's knocking loads of stuff down now. <laughs> oh, all right, you. Shh, shh. There we go. I think he's gonna be calm down. <laughs> Best part of the stream. That's it, isn't it? Uh, he's lo he is a lovely dog, actually. <laughs> yeah, settle down, aren't you? Settle down. He's gonna sit under the table now and calm down a bit. How old is he? He's actually quite old. He's about. Uh, I think he's eleven years old now. <laughs> his name is Frank yeah Frank the dog because we had another dog called Bruno and there's a famous um, <laughs> no that's the strange thing isn't uh, named after Frank from the from the Discord server um, we had another dog called Bruno and there was a famous boxer called Frank Bruno and it just seemed very apt to call him uh, Frank so whenever we were calling for the dogs we'd say Frank Bruno and it made sense Frank Abbott <laughs> yeah um yeah, it's turned. This is a weird stream today. Uh, I hope you're still enjoying it because it's turned from political discussion, philosophical discussion. Uh, dogs have interrupted. This has been crazy. Uh, I've I'm, I always really enjoy doing this, but I don't know whether my views haven't gone down too much. <laughs> it's 168. It seems pretty pretty stable. This is weird, isn't it? That's why I tune in. Frank the legend. Uh, he's not coming on to every stream. He's too much of a hassle. He's just staring at the door now because um, we've had a painter in. Did I say that? Yeah, we've had a painter in, and he's um, he's just leaving the painter. So, <laughs> awesome fun stream. Uh, I haven't seen the Sonic movie, so I can't comment on that. It that didn't look good. The bits, the the artwork that I saw, but I'm not sure whether they did they change that in the end or something. I, I sort of heard memories of that. Anyway, the final bit that I want to do here, I'm, I'm not going to do this logo. I'm sort of going to try and get away with it if I can. Um, uh, yeah, the, I could do a logo of the game here, Atlas Empires, but it would take a while. And I'll see what they say anyway. Um, but the final bit is just adding a bit of depth. So, um, oh, I was going to say about the, bu the, the button. Yeah the, yeah, the button. So you can change this to the color mode. And you can change the color. So if I change the color here to, let's say, green and then paint over it, you can see it's getting a sort of greenish tinge there. Uh, and which is actually weirdly, weirdly working in that case. So I'm just adding a bit of um, color variation to look like it's sort of reflecting a bit. And there we go. Um, anyway, so uh, the color mode. So it doesn't change your shading at all. It just changes the color. And that's really good. I'm, I'm glad people are enjoying the, the stream. Uh, next tutorial, you need to photo scan Frank. <laughs> 
it's uh, this is why I love doing the live streams. It's it's unpredictable. It's uh, it just sort of you go with the flow and you have fun. It's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, anyway, where are we with the browns? We need to go a bit of the darker color there. Just want to give a bit more depth to that. Like so, yeah. Now it's sort of it's protruding a bit more in that uh, in there. And now I'm going to go right in, push a bit harder because I've got pressure sensitivity. That's another reason why you want a graphics tablet, is I can push harder with my pen and get a bit more depth to it there. There you see. There we go. Oh, look at that for a button. Oh. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the CGI for Sonic. Uh, wait till you see the trailer for The Call of the Wild. Ooh. Uh, yeah, Color Dodge is quite a good one as well, isn't it? So within here, uh, it's the, these are the blend modes, and I, I probably didn't explain that much, but I use, so the darkened ones are here, and the lightened ones are here, and I use the multiply and screen, screen for lighten, obviously, and multiply for darken. Um, and the, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, see you later, spiky Danto. <laughs> um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, um, so uh, you've got, uh, yes, yeah, so, but you've got these other modes as well, which are cool, and they are separated now into different sections, but these are all types of darken. The reason I use multiply is because it adds that, um, that it, it pushes the color. So let's um, let's explain that a little bit. So um, in the, it's difficult to explain with the color wheel, actually. Uh, can I use the gradient? In, no, I can't. I thought there was another way of showing this. Uh, no, there isn't. Uh, but it's uh, it pushes it in the right direction for color, and I'm not making any sense. And uh, hopefully, uh, it will make uh, it, look that up in terms of multiply what that does. <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing? We're, we're all still here, but Bluetooth, and we're still going with this. Is this normal for streams? Do they actually take this long to do stuff? Um, I suppose if they're gaming, which is the normal streaming type thing, isn't it? Um, they're probably spending hours uh, because everybody loves a bit, a bit of gaming. So I'm adding a bit of depth now, like I was saying. Uh, so just going around, um, at look, again, looking at my image, seeing if, where I need a bit of shadow, if I need any. Um, so again, these straps probably need a bit more. Again, I'm, I'm across to that dark side, the, the dark side. <laughs> and uh, just a bit of ambient occlusion style here, painting it on. Uh, probably a bit down here as well, underneath here. And can you see it's adding that bit of depth now to um, this? Hopefully it is anyway. I think we need a bit more in here, sort of that ambient occlusion feel. Still got my texture brush on. Can you see my texture brush there? And going around. Uh, you're making yourself sound old, Grant. These game streamers. <laughs> I'm afraid I am old, Dominic. <laughs> Uh, I suppose, uh, do you know, I'm a little bit jealous because playing games all day long, that just sounds so awesome. But actually, would it be? I don't know. Do they, they probably have pressures. They probably have pressures of, I'm going a bit too far with this probably, aren't I? Um, pressures of uh, numbers and that sort of thing. Frank is the dog, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you missed um, Frank um, Abbott. Oh uh, yeah, Frank uh, the dog interrupted. Uh, oh, thanks, Bluetooth. Uh, the model's looking good. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this one. I'm probably going way too much further, as per usual, than I should have done with the model. Uh, the other thing I want to do, and I'm going to just keep going because I'm having loads of fun. Uh, are you, is everybody all right? <laughs> you, can, you can leave any time, so why am I saying is everybody all right? It's because I'm used to a class of kids, and if this was a class of kids, they'd be going, ah, oh. <laughs> they'd be so bored by now. But I'm loving the fact that uh, you're enjoying it with me. It's amazing. Uh, have all the time. Uh, I have all the time I want. Tons of games, and I play maybe one game for a few hours a day at most. That's uh, it's, it's probably best to um, limit to that. I, I find it tough when I get going with games. I find it tough. Right onto this strap here. No, no, I'm on, on, onto the buckle. Buckle, big buckle, right. Buckle, big right. And I want to put some scratches on this. Now scratches, scratches, scratches on metal are quite fun. So multiply brush. Uh, not too much color. We'll go about there. And we'll put a big scratch in here like this. So it's going all the way across. Might be a bit too much actually. A bit of a dent. Ah, now that's that's a good point. Uh, I can't add too much character because I have duplicated these. That's a frustration. 
and it's going to be obvious uh, when I do that. Uh, what I could try with uh, this one. Oh, Jimmy. Wait, shush. He's desperately trying to get out. <laughs> Am I going to sell it? No, it's for Atlas Empires, so I can't. Uh, they will own the rights to it. Um, so where are we? Uh, I'm, I think, I'm just going to let the dog out, then he can... Yeah, I'm going to let the dog out. Hold on. <laughs> Got that bang off again. <laughs> there he goes. Because my wife just came home and he was sniffing at the door. You might have even heard him go like that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, that's the problem. When you duplicate objects like this, um, I've got this duplicate that's sharing the um, UV space. So any character elements I add to this are going to be uh, exactly the same on the other side, which doesn't look good. So I'm just thinking if I can scale in the X, local X, minus one. And then I've flipped it around and that might give me enough breathing space to add a bit of character, which is not going to be really obvious then. We'll see. So I'm just going to move that into position. That's often the case, isn't it, with 3D work? I don't know whether you find that with the work that you do yourselves, but uh, problem solving, isn't it, a lot of the time? Uh, so yeah, is that looking, so from this angle, that looks okay. So we can, we can work a bit more on this. So we've got this scratch in here. I, I should turn my other brush off. So Alt, left click, Buckle big right, back to texture paint mode. Okay, so um, let's turn my texture brush off because we don't need that anymore. But let's go to the screen. Now on the bottom here, it's gonna pick up a highlight. Ooh, my brush went weird then. Alt middle click to get back to the center there. And it's gonna get a highlight down here. It seems a bit bluey, doesn't it? And just in there, a really strong highlight. And can you see it looks a little bit like a scratch, it probably needs a tiny bit up here as well. Okay, so there we go, scratches. So from a distance there, you can see that looks like a nice little dink, and that's cool. <laughs> Interesting, I'm looking at my watch because uh, I'm getting a, a text, and that's from Chris Handlauser, the lead artist. So I believe he did this piece, I'm not sure. He usually does most of it in terms of the concepts and things, uh, but occasionally he'll say, it's a bit like this, and show me another piece of someone else's work or something. Um, but generally speaking, I imagine that's his work. He's great. He's done some really cool stuff. Um, uh, um, yeah, it's great working with people like that as well because you get to um, learn from them and uh, sort of discover uh, more stuff. It's, it's like, that's what I miss, I suppose, about just doing the YouTube on my own is that I haven't got a team to draw on and, uh, and ask questions, but I have got a community, I suppose, which is nice doing things live as well because I can say, does anybody know how to do this? <laughs> and I, I kind of don't care enough. That I don't want people to think like I'm super amazing at this stuff. Well, I suppose I do want people to think that because it'd be nice, but um, I don't mind. I'm comfortable in myself to know that um, people are right. The fact that I don't know everything. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I think streaming is the best way to see someone's personality. Yes, you can certainly see my personality uh, to interact with their audience uh, and for that person uh, to interact with the audience. So happy to find that you stream a lot. Uh, I plan to watch often. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, do people want to see more streams? Let me know. I'm starting to lose viewers. So I imagine people are, are sort of now um, we've got to the sort of natural end of this. Not that we've lost loads or anything, but... Um, probably people getting fed up with me by now. Surely they're fed up with me by now. But there we go. Little dinks in the metal. And that's looking a bit more like the metal. That's probably one of my more successful metal pieces now. Uh, so another one up here just for um, prosperity's sake. I don't know what the term really means. <laughs> and let's screen that bit and screen that bit there. There we go. A few dinks in the metal. It's looking kind of fun, isn't it? Uh, I'm, I have enjoyed this piece. It's been a really good, interesting one. Uh, anything else that it needs? Because I think we've probably... Uh, pr prosterity, yes, in terms of prosperous. I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, I would watch more streams. Thank you, Gargloff. Want more streams, Bunties? <laughs> Thank you very much. Mirror GVs, XD, the best... Uh, and worst discovery, yes. Great optimization, bad for character building. Yes, exactly that, Dominic War. Good points. Um, uh, Unleash 75, interesting question that I would like to know about too. How did 
you get your color palette set up. Um, so at the beginning I was showing that, but um, so I just borrowed it from another one. So I went file uh, and append, and then you can go to the files and bring in the color palettes. But also each time you find a color that you think I need that, S left click and it comes down at the bottom there and you can get rid of things as well. And color palettes. It's great chatting to you and the community. Thank you, Interpixels. Uh, looks great. Thanks. You inspired me. Marco Lukic, I think that's how you've... Uh, you're super amazing. Thank you very much. I love... This is why I love streaming so much. You're super amazing. Thank you. Uh, I, that's why I'm thinking uh, need a better mic because uh, I think it will help the streaming and the, generally the YouTube videos, but also a better camera, um, I think, because I look really contrasty there. Uh, now this one is my actual skin color. <laughs> Uh, color palette sorcery, indeed. Hello, Mr. Big Man, <laughs> Lizzie the Lizard. <laughs> Hello to you too. Um, yeah, so um, I think uh, let's let's go full screen, shall we? Let's go full screen and see what we're looking like. Obviously, I haven't done this side here. Yeah, no one cares about that. Uh, I suppose what I would like to do. There is one last thing I'm going to do. The scrolls. The scrolls. The ancient scrolls. What is that? Uh, that's a Luke Skywalker thing or something, isn't it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm I'm a Star Wars fan, but not as big as some people. Some people go crazy for Star Wars, don't they? Let's see if we can get the scroll. I think that's the scrolls. I'm going to save this. So uh, save as and make a second version of this so I don't ruin the old one. Oh, come over here. There you are. Now that's in the learn icon. I'm actually going to put it in the inventory icon so I know it's there and call this scroll. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Scroll. There you go. <laughs> I'm just, it's Chris again. He's saying, um, oh no. Every look. Oh dear. Uh, it's some sort of export bug. I've exported them wrong again. Uh, I keep doing that. I keep exporting them. And I forget to check, thinking, well, nothing could go wrong with an export, an FBX. It's an OBHA export, actually. And I've messed it all up. And it's in the live stream. So, oh, I'm on the buckle still, am I? Yeah, so um, let's get to the scroll. The scrolls. Um, uh, I'm thinking about that uh, text now. I should uh, turn my phone off, shouldn't I, in this? Anyway, uh, let's do it. Uh, I don't have friends because... Love to learn. So all day looking for tutorials on 3D. Uh, yeah, it, you know, that can be a bit bad for you. You've got to be a little bit careful, otherwise you will <laughs> end up... Um, it, that can cause depression when you're away from people too much. Uh, oh, they're set, they, they are sharing the same text of these, so I'm going to go for the front one. Uh, map front, yeah. And just a bit of... Are we on texture paint? Did... Oh, I'm on smear brush. Ah, no, it went back onto the bag there. That was weird. Map front, there we go. Oh, that's because I'm in object mode, texture paint. Right, now let's get to the multiply brush. And let's put some multiply in there. I can probably... We'll go for a little bit of brown. I suppose I ought to go to the blues, but I'll go to the purples because I want... that Because the purple is closer to the brown, I'm doing that. Um, so it's going to be a bit closer to the bag. Oh, that looked a bit weird in there. Now it's coming across in the back there, but I don't think it's coming across in there, so that's all right. It's too purpley at the moment, isn't it? Let's go back over to here. Now that looks a bit better, doesn't it? I'm going to go a little bit underneath here as well. Just a touch. Just a touch. I'm doing a Bob Ross now, aren't I? Uh, where are we? Uh, Always enjoy your streams, and Mike is perfect for my viewing. That's great. Thanks, Unleash75. The secret text. <laughs> uh, did you ask the developer if you can upload concept art for us? Ah, no, I forgot to do that. I need to uh, get onto that and uh, see what they say. Uh, they might be a little bit uh, unsure about that one, actually. Um, so, okay, Grant, your lack of Star Wars knowledge is still a lesser crime than the new trilogy. <laughs> I think that's what turn me off Star Wars a little bit to be honest. I'm planning on making my own games and it's really inspiring. Great to hear it. Uh, Knocky Pocky Art. Uh, looking good. Thanks very much. Uh, Bunty's BFF. Bunty's at Bunty's BFF. No, I'm oh, sorry. You're adding someone. I see. Uh, oh, I see. You're being friends with Bunty who's upside. Oh, yeah. I think what's going on. Um, does anybody here listen to the YouTubers podcast? 
Spotify. I, I don't really do Spotify much, actually. Um, uh, but uh, it's something I sort of thought about looking at a bit more. Um, you could rotate one map 180. Um, yes, then we would see the other side, but I haven't drawn the other side because I was being slack there as well. But you are quite right. That would be better. I think we're pretty much there with this, actually. Uh, what I One last bit is just the... Let's change this across the screen. Uh, let's go to a nice sort of warmish screen color there and just a little bit on top. So it just sort of catches the light. Like so. Ta-da! <laughs> I think we're pretty much there now. I think there's just a few areas where I'd like it to catch the light a bit more. So I've just gone across to the bag now. Um, yeah, one last thing that I always tend to do is just to make sure I've got the contrast right. Oh, that, not like that though, flipping it. Um, so I'm using the screen brush on the top. Got to be careful not to go too far. And then the multiply brush at the bottom. Just to make sure we're... Oh, I haven't got much. There we go. I think we're getting there. Lovely. I might, do you know, have I gone too far there? I think I have actually. On that corner there I have, but not on that corner. And under here I think that's where it needs. There. There we go. Right, control. Uh, Control spacebar, did I just, I, can't, I do that naturally, I have to control spacebar isn't it, it's full screen, there we go. Um, a cool backpack which took way too long. <laughs> um, so, uh, any other questions from anybody? I'll zoom in a little bit more, there we go. Um, yeah, talking about the latest trilogy, I mean it's so frustrating when um, a company gets involved with these sort of things and destroys it. And that's pretty much what um, seemed to happen with Dizzy, I can't blame them but they're trying to appeal to too many people aren't they uh, it on is a simple button press it on is a, I'm not sure what that one uh, any tips for avoiding mesh holes while sculpting especially when merging two boolean objects uh, yes um, 2.81 solves that issue with the remesher if you use the remesher that should do it as long as you're detailed enough I, I would say um, Oh, wow, you're the first person to ever say my name right. Oh. <laughs> so I just said knocky pocky art, but I, I'm not sure if that... <laughs> is that what I said? <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be a backpack. I feel that it's missing those straps. It probably is. But it looks like a pack. That's the main thing. It looks... It's an inventory icon. So it's supposed to be a backpack, but I think we're, we're all right with it. <laughs> uh Really looks good. I still think the stitches look a bit too big, but that's just me. Are they, they possibly are, but I'm, I think that still keeps it with the stylized um, feel. Uh, the buckle's nice and big, and the stitches being nice and big. I'm hoping that sort of keeps that sort of stylized look. I'm noticing the buckles probably. No, just leave it. <laughs> uh, what will be your next stream about? Yes, what would people like to see? Uh, that's what I'm going to ask. Um, yeah, uh, I can't promise anything because uh, his work's pretty tough at the moment, but I'm getting there. Uh, we'll, we'll see how we get on. Uh, how do you give an object character and not make it look too realistic? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the tough thing here. And I think I may have gone a tiny bit too realistic, maybe, in places. Um, exaggeration, that's the key, I think. Yeah. Um, a backpack has the straps on the back. Yeah, they're out of the way on the back. Quite right, uh, Unleash75. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think this looks awesome. I want to see the dog out. He's downstairs looking for food from my wife. <laughs> I would like to see a creature creation on the next stream. Creature creation. Um, I'll give that some thought. Yep, uh, that could be quite fun. Uh, I, I'm not sure quite because, um, I mean, I did that head model, didn't I? And I was thinking of retopologizing and then, I mean, would people like me to see continue that? Uh, and would they like me to do the sort of boring bits like the retopology and stuff like that online? Uh, let me know. No, I think it looks fantastic, Grant. Did a perfect job. Uh, think any further would be over polishing, possibly. I do feel like those buckles are a bit too rough. That's the only thing. <laughs> uh, I would be a big fan of a creature creation, but anything you do, 
uh, would be a good learning opportunity. Thanks for that. Thanks for your support, Starlight Lime. Um, you know, like metal looks after you brushed and cleaned it from rust. I would go for that sort of style. Yeah, that, it's the metal. The metal is tough, isn't it? But I feel like it's not quite there. But it's this. I mean, I'm looking at it on this screen over here because it's much smaller and it's looking fine. So I'll be overdoing it, I think. Next stream, Dota 2 character. Still broadcasting. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? It's six o'clock. So that's the longest stream, I think, three hours. Uh, but I'm pretty much there. I missed the Masterclass grant. Uh, you can catch it up on, on, catch up with it on YouTube. It'll be all up there. Um, but obviously I can't comment on what you're saying. <laughs> uh, maybe trim sheet modular kit on next stream. Oh, well, so I, I see what you mean, the trim sheet. Uh, hang on, trim sheet slash modular kit. So you mean uh, trim sheet, isn't that an actual add-on? Trim sheet, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Uh, uh, just watching your sculpt uh, is a joy. Plus we get to guess uh, tips and ideas. Yeah, that's quite nice. I, I'm enjoying that too when people can add in uh, comments and things. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining me uh, and all the support you're giving me. It's been great fun. Really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, so yeah, um, until the next time, I'm not sure which day it's going to be, Thursday or Friday. Thursday seems to suit me a little bit better just because my, um, yeah, the, any hard surface stuff. Yeah, that's a good point actually. Um, probably get onto that in the exercises more first and then do it on here um, because I need to be a bit more happy with what I'm doing live. Yeah, um, uh, yeah possibly. Um, I'm just looking at some of the other comments. Uh, do uh, comment in the uh, comment below the video uh, for anything else you want to see. That's that's all cool. Uh, <laughs> so thanks very much, everybody. And uh, hello, Damien. <laughs> Oh, that can't, it's not showing your message, Spiky Danto. Sorry about that. My mouse is going weird. There we go. Um, yes, so uh, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, the competition theme, actually, that's going to be the next video, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be the competition. So uh, it, all the, looking at the competition entries, giving a bit of feedback and things. So uh, we'll be doing that next week, definitely. Uh, is it next week? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's on Monday. Uh, so uh, there'll be a stream there. Uh, so I might just do that with my stream, stream next week. I'll probably try and do one stream a week anyway. Anyway, thanks everybody. Uh, it's been really great fun. And uh, I will uh, see you next time, which is next week. <laughs> see you soon. Bye-bye.